nominated by Sarah yeah, and there. seconded by Tim. Thank you. Can invite the uh, chair. Oh, sorry. Will you say hi? Hi. Thank you for that short straw. <laughs> actually on Skype from Russia. So welcome, Yanni, as well. I think that's a first for the council to have somebody attending from Russia. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite scary, Yanni. <laughs> okay, before we actually, before we start the meeting, guys, I want to open with a, a sad note. Um, on Friday of last week, uh, Derek Anderson passed away. Uh, he was 86, and Derek was for 24 years on the Rickerton Borough Council, when there was a Rickerton Borough Council, a square mile, um, and then he served for six years on the Christchurch City Council. Um, when he was on the council, he was very involved when the council decided it was going to build a new convention centre, Horncastle Arena, new library, mm. art gallery, and the new stand at Jade, all for a hundred million. <laughs> so Derek was <laughs> Derek was very involved in that and worked very hard on that. Uh, he was also on the Art Centre Trust. He was chair of the Christchurch Heritage Trust, a major um, heritage advocate. Uh, president of the Western Brass Band, fourteen years, and past president of Rickerton Rotary. Um, he was also a former president of the Christchurch Boys High Old uh, Old Boys Association. Um, and chaired their 125th Jubilee, uh, Jubilee Organising Committee. Um, he was recognised in the 2011 New Year's Honours List when he was made an Officer of the New Zealand Order of Merit uh, for services to the community. And the Rickerton Wigram Community Board, as it was then named in 2015, uh, named the street in a new Longhurst subdivision after Derek Anderson. So there's a Derek Anderson case um, for his contributions to the local area. I've actually known Derek for about a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, he always had a ready smile and was willing to talk about anything. Uh, he was interested in a lot of things. So we will miss Derek, and I'd just like us to stand uh, for a 60 seconds for a minute now. Thank you all very much indeed. Right. So we have apologies from the Mayor for lateness. She's expecting to be here about 11. Uh, and Deputy Mayor Turner and Councillor East. Were you just moving those? Or? Moved Pauline, seconded uh, Sarah. I'll put those, those in favour because they are actually opposed. Carried. Uh, I don't have any declarations of interest. Uh, is there anybody here for the public participation forum? Anybody here to speak for five minutes? Is that why you're here, Tina? No. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> right. There are no deputations by appointment, and there's no petitions. And I'll move that the supplementary reports be added to the meeting, the mayor's report and the draft submission on the Christchurch Casino licence renewal application. Sarah seconds. I'll put those, those in favour, please say aye. Those opposed, carried. And so we're going to start with the community boards, and we're doing in a slightly different order than what's in the agenda. So we're going to. The bike of legs. Ah, oh, the bike of legs. How could I forget something so important? Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. So um, at the. Uh, Sarah, you tell us. 
So I've been up in Palmerston North for the last couple of days at a conference, and I have come back um, bringing bling, which is fantastic. So um, uh, every year the Bike to the Future Awards are awarded, um, sort of partnership between NZTA and CAM, and um, this year there were 60 nominations, and we were up for the Best Built Infrastructure Award which we handily won for the unicycle route, which is absolutely fantastic. And then, um, <coughs> so we're up against the other category winners, including actually Biketober, the big Christchurch event um, held last October that's gonna be held again this year, that won um, the Revolutionary Award, which is fantastic. And we had a, a bit to do with that too, which is great. And then, um, and then we also won the Supreme Award for the unicycle route as well, so best bike project. Um, in the country for the unicycle route, which is just amazing, really fantastic, and it's very clear from talking to um, you know, the transport professionals and advocates and uh, other elected members uh, in Palmerston North that um, people really look to Christchurch for leadership in this space, which is which is really good. And um, while we are, while other places might be doing one or two really cool individual things, the fact that we're doing this um, this network. And getting it done to such a high standard is um, the envy of, of the rest of the country, which is which is really good. So I'd like to just call out quickly, um, uh, you know, Lynette Ellis and, and Terry Pierce and the rest of the team, who have done amazing work. Um, and uh, so Oricon, Isaacs, JC, Citycare Joint Venture, WSP, Opus, and a couple of staff members who were um, integral to the project but are no longer working for council. Um, so John Hanna and Gemma Dioni who were um, heavily involved um, in, in driving that as well. So I don't, I know I've missed people, and I can see people at the back there, and so it's just been really, really cool, and um, ITE are gonna organize a little bit of a, a little bit of a hoodie at some point um, for everyone, which is really cool. So, yeah, so that's it really. Mm. I'll just come put them on the, the front desk so we can sit and do a meeting. <laughs> got a video as well here. It's a 30 second video which is one that all of the, um, the finalists had to put together a video. Oh, to awesome. Them awesome. As a conference. I've just made my coffee. Mm -hmm. Cycle Cycleway is a major cycle route which runs between Christchurch Central City and the University of Canterbury. Unicycle travels through some of the most scenic areas in the west of Christchurch, including Haggy Park and Rickon and Bush. This cycleway features a number of innovations, including the first dual gated barrier at a rail crossing in New Zealand. Unicycle integrates into the University of Canterbury with shared cycling and walking facilities. Lovely. Look, I, th I think we need to thank the Rickerton Worker and Halls for um, Community Board as well because it was a collaborative process and they helped um, the team and, and the ETI committee get through a few little glitches there. So it was a really good collaborative process. Yeah, great. Great news. And thanks to all you guys. She forgot you, Brendan. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you very much indeed for that, Sarah. They look awesome. Um, right, we're going to go on to Waikura. Jake. Yeah. Was Sally too scared to come? <laughs> <laughs> Was Sally too scared to come? <laughs> she had a uh, CDHB meeting on. Um, so, thank you for juggling the agenda and making room for me. Um, so I'm happy to take most of the report as read and just highlight um, obviously the part A as well as a couple of other smaller things. Um, so the part A was regarding the tea kiosk in, um, in Hagley Park. There were four, um, there were four uh, proposals uh, for, for the use of this. Three were deemed non uh, three were deemed commercial and one was, was classified as uh, uh, non-commercial. We put a note on this to go to you guys that basically said 
we wanted some greater clarity from staff around what is commercial and what is non-commercial because we felt there was one proposal from the existing team <coughs> that could have some, well that does have some non-commercial benefit and we just kind of wanted to be able to compare apples with apples and <coughs> get some clarity about, about how those two things are defined. Um, the other thing I wanted to pull out was the uh, leave granted to, uh, to the community board and the district licensing committee for a lawyer to appear on our behalf around the 375 Ferry Road liquor store. So we're still just sort of waiting to hear a little bit more about this. As well as that, <coughs> I wanted also to mention the Rose, uh, Rose Chapel Historic Trust. So that's going out. Where is that? Sorry, I'm having trouble finding my notes. That's being list advertised soon anyway for the for the use of that <coughs> uh, building. And I think you can book it now actually. Mm. Sorry, say the one again. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Okay. Well, that's that's my report then. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Jake. Are there any questions from anyone? Sarah. Not a question, but just going to point out just on the oh, just on the screen behind Vicky's head. Um, it was um, we had the opening of the Rapa Nui Share Crop Cycleway over the holidays as well, and I've got to yeah. say that um, once those daffodil bulbs are out, it's going. To, I mean, people are loving it already. There are mm. lots of people using it all the time. Um, it's really high amenity. It's safe, and um, once that whole route is complete, I, I would I think that would be our next winner. So, yeah, that's yeah. next year's entry, I think. I went for a. Bike, it's bike ride down it. It's beautiful. pretty cool, right? Yeah. yeah. It's not quite as beautiful as the one in Rickerton, but it's pretty beautiful. <laughs> 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 yeah. The town section is a little greenery. It's yeah. actually stunning. It's really stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Pauline. Can I just add to that too that um, it's actually that idea to run the cycleway down the median between the trees actually came in a bit later on and it was a really good idea, but the tricky thing is to be able to do that without damaging the mm. tree roots. Mm. So the whole way that they've done that has been fantastic. Mm. Something like 3,600 square metres of porous pavers. They've planted another 150 um, new trees where they're currently mm. being planted, and they've actually planted more daffodil bulbs as well. Mm. So I think it is arguably the most beautiful one. Okay. Will be, Fair enough. Um, the section, but it, it's um, it, it, it's really special there, and it's a wonderful yep. um, asset <coughs> in Christchurch. So yes. we really are starting to to get the runs on the board with these cycleways, and as I said um, at the opening, everyone that's open is going to make it more um, easy for everyone to see what an incredible vision this is for the city. Once we get the 13 connected cycleway routes finished, it's one project. Um, it's an incredible visionary project and, and it's just going to be wonderful, but it, little by little it's starting to appear. Mm, yeah. And as, as Sarah said, uh, Christchurch has been quite well respected around the country for having this vision and people are looking to us and we're very lucky that we've we're out of the starting gate as we are because we're able to access that NZTA funding, which can be up to 50%, sometimes more, and it's a huge help. So we were, we were actually ready to go when all those announcements came out and with the Urban Cycleway Fund as well. So, you know, Christchurch is winning here. Two other, things, two other things I just want to really quickly point yeah, out sure. was we had our Community Service Awards as well, which were a lot of fun. And also, um, there was a joint community board seminar yesterday about um, alcohol licensing, so that information um, was valuable. Jake, can I just pick you up on the liquor licensing thing? Does that mean that community boards can now appear at liquor licensing uh, hearings? Not to my understanding, no. Uh, no. Okay. And, okay. But you can have a legal representation. Um, <coughs> I think they've been given delegation to do that. Okay. Phil, sorry. Thanks, Vicky. Jake, I was going to ask you a similar question. Like when the board go to the appeal <coughs> authority, are, are you, is the board looking at making a submission or actually supplying evidence? Do you, because that ca that's come up as being a really a crucial part to have the process right. Mm. Um, <coughs> maybe you can jump in here. 
Sorry about that. My understanding is the board provided evidence to this in as part of the first process, mm. and there'll be a lawyer engaged to um, because I understand that the next process is really looking at what was presented. And <coughs> <coughs> Perhaps on, I can comment. Uh, so, um, the uh, hearings, the chair of the hearings panel at that um, previous hearing gave leave for the community board uh, to actually engage and provide evidence. It wasn't expected that they would do that beforehand, but that's what happened. And so, um, uh, there was a workshop yesterday um, on the roles, responsibilities of community boards in this particular these um, hearings. Um, so you get some clarification of that, and it may well come back to council around deciding whether council delegates um, to community boards around providing submissions, as opposed to supporting other um, other community. Yeah. Uh, Thank interests. you, Car Carleen. Um, I I'm glad the point's been raised because, in fact, I was at the workshop, and I it seemed just seemed to me that there was a lack of clarity by some on the distinction between at this stage, whether we can we yep. give evidence or make a submission. So I'm just raising even it. So I know that we're just making so, sure, yeah. in fact, we don't make the same mistake twice. Yeah. OK, I've got Glenn and then Tim. No, I won't be All right, Tim. Just, just uh, and I, sorry, I apologise, I couldn't make the workshop, but there's a, because there is a clear difference between making a submission and evidence, mm -hmm. because when you put in evidence, you've got to be prepared for cross-examination. Yes. So I think when we get advice, whether it's community board or councillors or whatever, it's all about preparation if you were going to step over that line from submission to evidence. Mm. So I'm not telling you how to suck eggs, but I mean, that's the difference, Thanks. isn't it? You're absolutely right. That's yeah. right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, and Vicky, can I just say something to that as well? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really clear that council has delegated to community boards um, the ability to seek leave to be heard at the initial district licensing hearing. When it goes to ARLA for appeal, um, the community board um, can also seek leave. What we've done in this case in terms of Phillipstown is actually sought leave with the council, so we're just having one lawyer representing both community board and council. But it is quite a different, I think we need to be really careful that the community board is not there as a party um, it's, it's there as a special, with special recognition on behalf of the council, the territorial authority, um, and there does need to be some clarity and some, I think, better guidelines around just that process, because it is quite unclear, even for, in the legislation itself, around things like deadlines for when information needs to be provided, who should provide the information. One of the key questions that came from our community board at the initial district licensing hearing well, should we have legal representation? And there was some confusion over that. So I think it would benefit from having some really clear guidelines around how community boards can be involved. Um, and hopefully that workshop yesterday, which obviously I wasn't at, is a good start towards progressing some really clear guidelines. Okay, thanks, Jenny. Just on that, we got that remit through local government conference uh, asking the government to look at um, tweaking the legislation to give more um, emphasis or weight to community views, which would be represented by the community board um, when these um, uh, applications are lodged. So um, okay. that would be tie in quite well too. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that. Um, I'll put the motion to receive the community board report and then if you want to, we'll deal with the tea kiosk as well. Is everybody okay with that? Since it affects your board. Um, okay, so I'll just put the. the sorry, oh, I have to have a mover and second. I keep forgetting <laughs> those things. Uh, um, Dion moves and Sarah seconds. I'll put the the that. Those in favour, please say aye. Those opposed, carried. And would you like aye. to do number four, uh, number fourteen now? The tea kiosk, which was your no problem with anyone. Done. It seems that the staff and the community board are on the same side, the same staff. Uh, I mean, this, this came, I'll just, I'll just introduce it. It came to the community board. Um, we had a discussion about what community use was. 
uh, and this recommendation is just saying, can we look at the, the items that were there, are they community use, and then bring that to the community board or back to the community board so that we can decide, and then um, that will come back to a further recommendation to the council. So this is really just a passing it through so the staff can give advice, and then it goes back to the community board to discuss, and then it will come back to us. Right, so the new, new recommendation is that the council issue a closed RFP process to both request for information applicants, this to include a definition of what constitutes a community use with relevant, relevant evaluation attributes in order to allow effective comparison. You've got it all there? Yeah, okay. Right, moved Dion, seconded Sarah, no debate? Put that, those in favour please say aye. aye. Those opposed, carry. Thank you, I just wanted aye. Jake to be around to hear that. Okay, thank you. Um, and now we'll move on to Fendrick Monari Harewood. Sam, welcome. So this report's on page 29. Sam. Good morning. Well, thank you again for the chance to present our update for the month. Uh, there's just a couple of things I'll touch on, then I'll hand over to Aaron to talk through a couple of the slides on our presentation, and then we thought we'd be really kind and give you a video to finish off uh, today. Uh, first of all, you'll see uh, on page one of our report, we've obviously exercised our community board delegations. We've approved the two toilets at the uh, Rotokahu, uh, Rota Reserve, uh, and Aaron will talk about that shortly. We've put some no-stopping restrictions in on Helmore's Lane, uh, and we've obviously uh, looked at our discretionary response fund as well. There's just a couple of things to just note for your attention. Uh, firstly, the Jelly Park Recreation and Sports Centre, uh, that's construction still underway, or the redevelopment there. And a follow-up from our last meeting was that our staff would send around some information to you after Jimmy's request uh, on that timeline. So that's all, all going to plan. Uh, we've obviously got the Jeffries uh, Reserve Replacement Suction Tank coming up shortly as well, and I hope that's at our uh, meeting on the 20th of August. Uh, that alongside some work around the Glandovi uh, Residents Association uh, request, so we're working through that as well. We've had quite a number of public forums come along and present to us, which has been really good. Uh, you'll see under Section 6 there's been just a highlight of a couple of them that are there. Uh, and we'll touch on uh, the Monarch Butterfly stuff shortly, which was quite interesting. Uh, as I mentioned at our last meeting, we had the Community Service Awards as well, about two days before we presented last time. Again, we've just formally put that into the report for you. Uh, it was a really fantastic occasion and we've had really good feedback since, so we're really delighted with that. I might pass over to Aaron now to talk about the, uh, the lake. Yeah, thank you, Sam. So the Lake Rotokahatu Toilets, so this is a very, uh, it's an increasingly popular mm. reserve. Um, half of it is what was the former Waimari Council landfill, which is a large kind of hill area there, there, there next to the jet ski lake. About 18 months ago, the issues there were around public kind of misbehaviour in a way. There's a little bit of antisocial behaviour and what have you. This past summer it's just kind of exploded in popularity on a really nice day because of the recreational value. It's a very high amenity value for the community. With uh, Because it's a, it's a lake, it's fresh water, the, the, the quality is absolutely superb. It's a very safe place for families to go and you know enjoy a little bit of water and recreation there. So there's, there's and there's a lot of other clubs that, that use that area. The um, the recreational reserve has now got proposed toilets to be installed. So it's from a, both a, a health aspect that the toilet facilities there be improved. Currently, there's just there's just portaloos mm -hmm. that are there. So there's two sites, they're about 700 metres apart, so therefore the, there needs to be the two toilets there. They, the staff are asking that the toilets be connected to the main services for electricity, uh, water and sewer, therefore there's a lot of, there's a, there's a high cost for the civil works construction. We've asked that staff go back and get firmer numbers on those, on those estimates when they came to the board, so hopefully they'll come back soon. In the meantime, we've asked that this coming spring and summer that adequate measures be taken in consideration around toileting facilities and the recreation groups and that type of thing as, as best as possible. Um, yeah, so one of the um, public forums I mentioned earlier was around monarch butterflies, and you probably think, what on earth is someone coming along to talk about monarch butterflies about? Um, but we had Vicky Steele come along and present to us on a lot of work she's doing in her own capacity 
around, um, I guess, their ability to uh, uh, to maintain that population in, in some of our parks. And what she'd done is a bit of research around it, and, and literally going in the mornings and counting in the in the evenings as well. Uh, and she determined that there's quite a few issues, uh, particularly in Burnside Park, around their ability to be sustainable. Uh, so we've referred that to park staff to work with her on. But we just thought we'd bring it to your attention at a really high level. It was quite a fascinating one uh, in terms of rodents and that type of th stuff. But you'll see on the left of that presentation up there, they've got these metal sheet bandings that they've tried at Aberley Park, and we're hoping we can do the same at Burnside. So quite a cost-effective measure uh, to sort of mitigate something. But it's just one of those points, I guess, where we've got someone actively involved in the community giving up their time to do it, and it was kind of adding real value to, mm. to what we do, so we wanted to bring it to your attention. So Aaron will, will finish off by talking about the group of the month, and then we can take questions. So the group of the mm. month, the Chinese, uh, Christchurch Chinese Church, it was formed in 1989 with about 25 uh, in the congregation. Since then, they've, they've grown. The, the group's now based at 286 Greers Road in Brunoise. Mm. So that's opposite Jerry Brownlee's electorate office there. Um, the physical location of the, of the church is actually in the Papua Nui Ward now following the representation review. However, most of the congregation do come from the Federal Family <laughs> area, so we do provide a lot of the funding in that regard. Um, the organisation played a significant role in the af aftermath of the 2011 earthquake. They took on responsibility of looking after many of the families uh, in, of the victims in the CTV building who came from overseas. They provided accommodation, food and support. The police also held daily briefings with the families at the church. The photo on the right um, is actually a, f a displaced boulder from the Port Hills, which local council staff and Sierra staff organised to be delivered to the church. It's now placed on the corner of the site and is a memorial for the victims of the earthquake. Um, and just below that is also a time capsule buried, and that's due to be um, uh, lifted, I guess it's called, uh, I think it's October 2039. Uh, the church provides a variety of activities and programs not just to the Chinese community, uh, people of the community, but also a weekly community English language class. There's a weekly older adults education program with about 60 people attending each week. There's, those ages, ages range from 50 to 90 years old. And there's also a Christmas in the car park, which is a delivery of goodie bags um, at Christmas time to the local Brunoir community. That's coming up in a video next. The uh, there's a variety of youth activities, tuition and peer support, there's a Friday night youth program, a leadership program, but base, uh, basketball group and a high school youth group. A new project that they're starting in this past year is targeted at young people who don't have an interest in sport or recreation but are keen on computers and arts, so they've, created, they've run a creative media group who are part of this video that we're about to show you. So hopefully... Christmas in the car park this year was great. We've done it a few years and uh, it's our chance to take the message, the true message of Christmas outside the walls of the church, share with our neighbours and it was just great to see the joy in the kids' faces and their parents and uh, it was just wonderful this year. Hello, 大家好,感谢神这次的圣诞晚会,平安的举行,我们这次有机会跟小朋友们一起来唱歌跳舞,耶稣说让小孩到我的跟前来,我想最好的方法就是和这班小朋友们一起来在外面的小朋友一起来到
lovely. Cool. <laughs> and Thank just you. to finish off, just picking up on the the alcohol seminar that was done last night, the combined uh, board. Very informative. Uh, thank you very much to the staff for coming along. It was an excellent seminar. The, the takeaway for, I, I feel, our board was, I guess, around the successful um, objection to the application of an off-licence at Trafford Street there last year. So now the community members that were very uh, involved in that process have now gone to other areas of the city around and helping support other members of the community around that. So my takeaway from the, the seminar there last night was probably for boards to stay within the 204, the section 204 aspect of the of legislation and support the community. And instead of submitting evidence, or, or, or instead of bringing evidence, just make a submission in support of the community. It keeps things relatively uh, cut and dry. And then you support the other communities, that, or the, the members of the community that are objecting to the, to the submission. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Very full report. And we're just out of time now. Great. <laughs> so thank you very much indeed. Um, Aaron's going to move it and Rep's going to second it. Yeah? Right. I'll put that we received the report. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those opposed? Aye. Carried. Thank you Great. very thank much you. indeed. The video is stunning. <coughs> um, thank you. And Banks Peninsula, Pam. Vicky, it is very difficult to hear this morning. I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older. Um, okay. But all of the speakers this morning, it's been quite difficult to, um, okay. to hear them speaking. Okay. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> well, it's a bad thing because right. um, okay. you can't hear Terry while they're here. Right, okay. Um, so we'll, talk, we'll talk loudly. Right. Yes, thank yep. you. Can you no just there in front of a light? The words oh. are on there. This is on page five of your report, guys. Where has winter gone? Um, but this morning, we have got a, um, well, it's a report with lots of things that have gone on over the, of the last month uh, and a variety of issues, but no Part A's in it. So I want to bring up this morning and just highlight some things. The Whakahoa, the, the Fa <laughs> Waharoa Restoration of Whakaraupo, Akaroa Wharf, um, the Tree Working Group and the Akaroa Service Centre. So if we start with the Waharoa restoration in the Whakaraupo Cultural Reserve, it's quite a, a challenging heading there. But this is an amazing project that, that goes back some time. It's a partnership with the Department of Corrections to restore a carved Waharoa. Now the Waharoa is that, uh, that, that up there that's um, it's got two, um, two things on the side of it and then over the top is a, is, is a plank that sort of provides a a roof to it, but it's an amazing carving. Um, the original Waharoa was created as part of the Turning Point 2000 Canterbury Waitaha events to celebrate the millennium, so there was one there, but it was um, deteriorating in disrepair. So this um, has been repaired over the last three or four years, and it, it was um, rededicated on, on the 26th of July. But the important part about it was that it was done with the rest of, with um, with the um, with a prisoner um, who Department of Corrections who worked on this many thousands of hours to do it um, and who is very proud of his work that he's done. Now that that is a, an entrance to a cultural garden and it contains plants of cultural value, uh, particularly med medicinal plants. Um, and back in, two th in, in 2000, when this was um, originally put in, the gardens itself, there was nothing there. So in 20 years, the, the gardens have, have, have absolutely flourished. It was planted by the, um, the community um, with land care assistance, and Anne Jolliffe has been involved throughout this long period of time. So it's great to see that come to fruition. So the next one is um, the Akaraa Wharf. Now the Akaraa Wharf features in a lot of um, a lot of photographs, as you can see there. Beautiful part, a historic wharf and things. But we have um, have a few issues around it uh, that everybody wants to be on it at the same time, um, and that we have also got commercial users, recreational users, and the public using it. So there's been an issue, few issues with with things on it that shouldn't be there. So we've been having a bit of a, a tidy up. 
um, and there's been fish crates and things that we've been asked to remove from it. And we're also implementing um, some smoke-free signage um, in, pre in preparation for the cruise ship season. Uh, historically, tourists get off the boat and they light up immediately, so we would just like to encourage them to, to walk across the wharf safely and, and not light up as soon as they get off it. So we're looking at also smoke-free signs around the other areas of the town as well. So that was really triggered by a recent um, highlighting of it through your council process, and we, we looked at what we had in, in Akara and where we should implement that. The next one is about um, Armistice Day, the 100th anniversary. Now this beautiful war memorial is um, owned by the community. It's one of a few in New Zealand. It's managed by a, a particular committee, um, a, reserve, a, a, um, a war memorial committee of dedicated people. We have restored it and it cost about $900,000 to repair it following the earthquakes. Uh, we found the funding uh, ourselves and, and did that repair with the project manager. And so Armistice Day is coming up on the 11th of the 11th in November and we um, they had asked us for some funding and we have provided them with some funding um, and we've also written and uh, well we've provided them with a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars and we are underwriting it for a further thousand dollars to have that particular ceremony but if you're coming to Akarod have a look at it, it is the centre of the town magnificent maintained beautifully to botanical <coughs> garden standards it's just a, an amazing setting in the town and this is um, a, a good uh, story as well. This is, you know, we listen to the radio at the moment and there are so many poor stories about the council and I feel like hiding under the table. <laughs> this is one of those stories where we had a lot of trouble of getting this group over the line. They, they were continually dissatisfied what was, with what was going on. And suddenly something happened and we found the right people for that team to work with in council and they now have got a sound working relationship between the Christchurch City Council and the community. Just how they should be happening, um, each respecting each other and getting on with the job. And they've had a couple of working bees already. It is an old cemetery. There are 86 identified broken headstones for repair and restoration, not owned by families now because those families are well gone. But it may cost about $30,000 to repair a headstone. Um, and they're also planning for a memorial entrance. Um, and are going for council consent. So that's a good story, a great story about another partnership that, that has, um, has just gone so well from a disorganised, I mean from a disgruntled group to something that's positive and, and um, a good story to tell. And the last one is um, reopening of the service centre, Akara Service Centre. Now this is an amazing story too. It's, we're going to get our service centre back um, for us. So this is out of the former Akara post office. It was built in 1914. And was and is a replacement of an earlier building built in 1856. So it was a, it's just a, a large domestic building, but the interior still has original decorative plaster and mouldings, and plaster on the walls. And it's got a polished wall uh, of polished architraves, windows and door frames. So it is a magnificent old building, just alongside the War Memorial. The War Memorial's on the left. Over the other side of the road is the the museum and the, um, the old bank building. So it's, it's the centre of Akarara, and we're just so proud of that, that area. The service centre moves back to it on um, tomorrow, the 3rd, and the opening ceremony is on the 8th of August from 2pm to 4pm. So there are some um, residents, that, well not residents, um, businesses that will go into that building. Akarara District Promotions, I think, is going into one of the rooms. Civil Defence, our local civil defence team in Akarara, might have um, some space there as well. And New Zealand proposed are just working through the proposal at the moment to go into the, the right hand side there, the, um, the um, no, not sorry, on the right house, in the middle of the building. But um, the colours look a bit different, but they are, are based on the, on the colours that the building was, uh, was early on, painted earlier on. So it's got a clock there in the middle up the steps. There, uh, an old clock that has been nurtured and managed over the years and is back up and ticking away. So uh, we're very pleased to have our service centre open again and it has some new modern, uh, great modern facilities and that hope I won't drive, be able to drive, I won't have to drive to town. Council staff mightn't have to drive out to Akara either. They'll just um, link up and, and um, meet with us as appropriate. So um, we look forward to using it and having our first meeting in there later in the year. 
So that's um, the highlights that I've just a few things that we've picked out. Everything, of course, is important in this, um, and our community is well and involved in our events. But I just love the community to hear the lovely stories that we do hear at these mornings that come, and we should be looking at how we can get our, our community involved in, in some of these things that are going on. Thanks very much, Pam. Is there any questions, Glenn? Um, thank you. Uh, just over uh, 8.3 Pam smoke free. Uh, Akaroa, our smoke free and public places policy yes. already includes the precincts around our facilities. Yes. Yes. So that's already there with yes. relation to uh, the, um, the service centre yes. uh, and the museum. With the wharf and the library, I'm sure we can work with. Smoke Free Canterbury and the other groups we work with to negotiate a voluntary approach to that. We've had a lot of success. Um, along with the cycling, actually, we are recognised nationally for our uh, extension over our um, Smoke Free and Public Places policy and the way we're going about it. So if you would like us to set up some meetings, we could do that. Yeah, we'd love that. We'd love that discussion. Okay. The issue that we have got is that would a cruise ship person, would a tourist actually yeah. know what smoke free actually meant? So we need to perhaps convey that in the appropriate yeah, manner. Yeah, I think to we need town. to communicate with the cruise lines. Um, so when you know a cruise ship berths, passengers receive a, you know several announcements. So that could be just part of uh, um, you know the understanding when they come in, into Christchurch, Littleton, Akoa that you know these policies exist. Okay. Thank you. And thank you very much indeed. We just oh, I had one question, Vicky. Okay. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep. <laughs> so I just, paying for your I just wanted to check. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Yanni. On 6.3, 6 um, it, it's reported that one of the deputations asked that um, all our license structures on the wharf be removed. I wasn't quite clear from Pam's presentation whether that is being done and I also just wanted to clarify whether that's a decision that the board makes or whether that's a decision for council management. Yeah, Annie, I think that this was a recommendation that the board made and that it was up to the council to implement it um, and it wasn't the, the one that I was referring to in my presentation here this morning. This is a much larger issue that we have got with the, um, with the black cat and the users of the wharf. So it's, it's going through a process and the board has recommended that all of those structures that are not, um, well those structures that are illegal that, are, that haven't been consented be removed from the wharf. Uh, we haven't actually heard Black from Black Cat how they received that information, um, but that was the decision that was made and we need to work through that now. Okay. Um, so can we just clarify, is, that, is it up to the community board to take that sort of enforcement action or decision, or is that something that council management should be doing? It's council. We're not doing it. Council are doing it. Council staff are enforcing right. it. And have you had a response from? And our council staff. Do we have a time frame for them enforcing it? I'm not aware of a time frame, but it, it is. It is being enforced. I'm aware that it's being enforced. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Very last question, Phil, because we're over. No, sort of quick, you may have well have been going to say this too, Vicky, but I just want to thank Pam and the board, especially for the support and your communities of our heritage buildings. No, it just so much adds to the quaintness, and I'm sorry we can't come to the opening. I think we've got other meetings on, Pam. But right. clearly, your board, and just when you go to Akaroa, it just it stands out. So right. that's, it's, thank you. it's great thank work you. on the board's yes. behalf and the community. Thank you. Mm. Sorry. Uh, so we moved, uh, Tim seconded Anne, I'll put the report, those in favour please say aye. Aye. Those opposed carried, and welcome back Leanne. Thank you very much. Yeah. Do you want to take your um, computer? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> your emails might be more interesting than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Kia ora and welcome. I've got my red and black on today just to remind people to wear their red and black tomorrow. Um, yes, so t but tomorrow's the big day, so for everyone to wear red and black, so I'm putting the challenge out there. And um, now I'd like to invite the <laughs> Coastal Bearwood Ward to. Oh, good morning, Leanne. To your report, thank you. And council, councillors. Senator Jim. Mm. 
Do you want to get on to the... Um, yeah. uh, the first one, obviously, is um, Dallington Bridge Safety Concerns. Uh, the community came to us, um, the Recent Association, etc., and said there's some big concerns about safety and accidents. There was an accident just recently. So we're actually working with them and we have an on-site meeting with an engineer planned. So that's uh, something we're looking at at the moment. Well, the New Brighton Clock Tower, as you probably know, it's had scaffolding around it for quite a long time. And we're now actually seeing some action, which is great. Uh, the, the faces you can see, the clock tower face, they've been taken out and they have to be um, repaired, so I guess it's a pretty old type of system, so it'll take a while. But there has been some damage found in the actual um, building itself, and uh, that's been repaired, so it looks like it's about a year-long job. Um, behind that, of course, you know, we've just had the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, Brighton Pier fixed, and I just must tell you that uh, in the first month it was open, after it was opened again, we had 8,000 plus people in the first month, and the numbers are building up again, which is great to see something positive happening again. Uh, the tree removal South New Brighton Park, uh, this has been an ongoing issue for quite a while. We had, an, we had a council arborist come down just recently and had a look at the trees, and I think I mentioned at a previous meeting I was quite concerned about 30-odd trees coming down, and at this stage the, the arborists seem to think there could be up to 100 that need to come down. Uh, I think we've um, scaled that back now to the most urgent ones, which is about nine. But it's, it's a little bit concerned because... Um, a lot of the trees that are dying are on the other side of the walkway and they're dying not from salt intrusion through the ground but the water's coming in on particularly high tides and ponding around the tree roots. So we're now getting into, obviously you can see the damage to the estuary edge, that's erosion and uh, that's obviously a big issue. But it's a concern we're losing, losing trees further in with the ponding of the salt water because you know, the salt water is just, as I said, it's just sitting there for a, up to a week after, after a big event tide. So we'd love to work forward in that one. It's uh, just going an ongoing saga and we don't seem to be getting anywhere with it. Uh, this one is, um, this is the foreshore. This is a combined thing with, um, it, um, it's got DCL and Scape Public Art, and they're getting together to try to find out what they can do. We'll come up with some ideas, what they can do with that particular area. As you know, it's always been a bit untidy. It's where we have the uh, Anzac Day. So the idea is to see what they can do and see what improvements can be made. The community board or some of the members are working with that as well. Oh, this is the hub. The, look, this was a great event. Uh, it opened up on a really chilly Sunday, one of the few cold days we have down there. But uh, it, uh, it was a cracker day as far as people coming along. Uh, Glenn was there and Joe and, in fact, all the community board and councillors were there. Great turnout. Um, as you can see there, we had, that, we had a picnic on the other side of the road. There's been a steady stream of people coming to the Regenerate hub. A lot of people are not going because they think nothing's going to happen, and, and that's quite sad, really. And I'm having to kind of almost knock on doors and convince people to come along. I think it's because it's been so long-winded that there's a bit of despondency in the area. But again, at the same time, there are people coming along. So, and that's why I, I think you know, going on a bit further than that, the community needs some quick wins. Just, you know, there's, there's not a lot of hope out there at the moment, which is. Uh, is quite sad to hear, I believe. I think so. Is that about it on that one? Yep. Oh, yeah, this other one here is um, obviously it's the issue of South Shore. Um, and as you probably all know, um, you know there's, there's cases there where people can't build. And there's still people there who haven't been able to build and have still got a lot of money tied up in their sections and consenting and all this stuff and can't build. and. I don't know how you'd feel, but if you had a lot of money tied up and you don't know how you can uh, get out of, the, out of this position because you cannot build, you cannot sell your section, and you're $300,000 down. So uh, there was a case, as you know, over in Redcliffe last week that went for the person who was trying to build, but it didn't really set an example, which was probably disappointing. So look, it's something, I think, as a council, the community board 
Council and residents have got to work together and get some of these things fixed. There's too many half-finished projects or projects that aren't going anywhere at the moment, and it's affecting the community. Uh, and this is why I think the numbers are down at the Regenerate. They could be a lot more because, you, you know, one of the things you've got to do out there is give people some hope. And we're not, we're not doing that. We're not getting projects finished. Uh, people want to know they've got a future for their families, themselves, and also hope. So they're the two most important things, future and hope. If we can give them a bit of that, we'll move forward. But until we get something sorted out, Estuary Edge, South Brighton, South Shore building, we're going to have this clashing. And it's not the right way to move forward. So I'm not sure the right way forward, I'm not sure what it is, but we have to work together somehow and get at least some of these issues solved. Otherwise, we're going to be coming back to this meeting all the time talking about the same things. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry? Oh, Sarah. Thank you, and uh, thanks, Tim. I'm just wondering if there's a, a communication issue here. So, I mean, there's always, I mean, th across the city, there's a never ending list of things that need doing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we've opened Toyota QE2, the pier's fixed, you've got your brand new mm. playground, the um, hot salt water pools are on the way. Yes. Are we not celebrating that enough, if you think that people no, are thinking look, that we're not doing anything for the area? And I, I cannot speak highly enough about those. They're wonderful. They yeah. are. Yeah. But, but, it's, but those things are, are like pluses. But when you start playing with people's lives and livelihoods, yeah. that's the difference. Because the message you're saying is yeah. that people feel like we're not doing anything. No, no, I'm probably... OK, and I'll correct that. Yeah. There is great things happening. In the east, yeah. we've got the pool, we've got the pools, the schools. You know, there is some great things happening. I'm not talking about that. Those are pluses, but there are some minuses, and the minuses oh, are absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So don't get me wrong. But people are very, very thankful for those, and there is hope in that respect. But I'm talking about the people that some of these things actually affect, like limbs, um, insurances. It's a different issue to what you're talking about. Yeah very, very grateful and very thankful. You won't get anybody who will say anything against those things. So you think maybe, um, I mean, there's the regeneration stuff, but actually the, the, um, the, the sort of coastal hazards issues of the district plan, getting that yeah. sorted. Yeah, well, there's a and coastal, there's, there's yeah. we seem to be at loggerheads over the estuaries in South Brighton and in South Shore, and we've got this building issue. Yeah. Now, now, the, um, South Brighton and South Shore probably have the most issues at the moment. Yeah. So you know, I shouldn't really call the. Whole, I'm not really referring to the whole east. I'm referring to a particular area okay. that has issues. But there is a process that's going on there. So um, we've got the. Uh, um, but a, but a, a methodology has been devised by the community for the community and with the community around how we engage on these really tough issues because they're not easy, you know. And I don't think that there's a there's a um, a magic solution that uh, is going to solve for uh, now and for the future. And uh, the, the whole approach around adaptive management mm. means shared knowledge, mm. shared understanding, and a shared vision for the future. Um, but also a really powerful capacity within a community mm. to adapt and change direction. Because we don't actually know what the future holds, and it's a vulnerable environment on both sides of the estuary. Although I'd rather be on your side than on the other side. Oh, I agree with you there. <laughs> but look, no, look, I, I agree with you there. But the majority, I mean, the residents themselves, most of them live day to day, and this is what's affecting them day to day. And you know, I know we're talking about the future, and I totally understand that, and I know that's what we're working towards, but. You know, I'm talking at grand level. I'm talking with the residents all the time, and yeah. this is what I'm hearing. No, and I, t I talk to them a lot too. Yeah, and you know, um, it's, it's not. Some of them are They still just don't feel like they're moving forward. Uh, I mean, let aside what you said before about the good things that are happening, but for the people that it affects, it's really. I'm Look, it, honestly, it we're all concerned issue, about but, their health. But do we, as a council, really want to leave it to the insurance industry to decide the future um, of? Uh, uh, coastally environment, coastal environments in Christchurch. No, we don't. I mean, we have to get it sorted out, but it's just. But but do yeah. we have to work with the insurance industry? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Because yes. they are going to be doing their own assessments. They are going to be determining what is vulnerable. They are going to be determining what they're going to charge by way of excesses and what they're going to charge for premiums. And they are going to decide not to cover some things. So. 
Um, we, need to, we need to be quite collaborative in this space. The reinsurers have been looking at this for a very, very long time. Um, to be honest, they probably had never heard of Christchurch before September 2010, uh, but they do now, mm. and they're very um, aware of multiple hazards. So it's not just one hazard, it's multiple hazards. And having conversations with communities that are already still stressed because of the effects of the earthquakes, which are still not resolved, um, is a very, very tricky thing to do, which is why we've gone for a co-designed collaboration, really, mm. around engaging the public in what is going to be, <coughs> I hope, a template for the rest of New Zealand for dealing with coastal environments. But, you know, it, we're on a journey and we're, 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 we're a wee way down the track, but not very far down the track. So I'm extremely hopeful that the um, model that we've developed will actually really help um, develop understanding about those environments. But how you build communities that are capable of um, acceptance of the need to change when that change occurs. And that may be many, many, many years in the future and another generation, but we have to set it up now for those decision-making environments to exist. You're right, but I mean, one of the obviously the issues with insurance is we've got a temporary bund fixing, uh, protecting people in South Shore. Well, insurance companies don't recognise temporary as a, a real fix, so that's one of the issues we've got as well. Yep, and th these are the issues which will be um, able to be resolved uh, over over time as we look at the different components. I mean, you know as well as I do that the hmm. entire estuary environment is not the same. Um, there are different components of it. There are, um, and and certainly the spit is different on the on the beach side with an accreting beach. So there are there are multiple issues that need to be resolved down there, and it's not just a one size fits all solution. I think you know because we the people down there have been living with it for so long, it's just a sheer frustration of um, get, it's been getting harder and harder, and yeah. nothing seems to be getting done. And, and that's why I'm I'm quite disappointed that. There should be more people going to this regenerate hub. They are going, but because they think nothing's going to happen, that, that's a terrible attitude to have, and that's what unfortunately some people have. Yeah, no, no, but Sarah's point was right: is that yeah. it's communication, communication, it communication, is, and um, and I, I do understand that there is some um, communication really to be lifted um, in the next week or so. So. To, to really drive things, um, help people understand the environment that they're living in and the challenges of resolving some of those issues for the future. It is a hard area, but I'm not, and I'm not going to pretend that it's not, but we're absolutely with them and we don't want to have the insurance industry make decisions for the future. Uh, we want to work um, with the insurance industry, but primarily we want to work with communities so that they understand they have to be adaptive living in that environment. Yeah, and I think you know, I think that could happen. Look, and I want to make it quite clear, you know, what, what um, was said before. There are some great things happening in our side of town. Fantastic yeah. things. So don't get me wrong, but you know, we've, with good things, we've also got some bad things. So I'm trying to keep it in balance here, but you cannot forget that there's. With the good things, there's also some very big difficulties for people. Yep. So and, it's, and it's not. A, I'm not doing a moan. I'm no. just saying there are issues out there, and there's some great things happening. And I'm. I'm also trying to say that that we do hear those. Uh, we're very aware of them, and we really do want to enable communities to take control of what are major decisions that are going to affect. Uh, the future living environments in those coastal areas, and it's not just in your area, but on the other side of the estuary as well, um, and then all around the Banks Peninsula. So, um, and actually, New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but I, I've kind of overdone it. But um. I just wonder that it's because the wheels turn so slowly, but. There's so much investigative work that needs to be done I know. and study, so it takes a long, long time. And staff have been working on this area for years, so it's about conveying that to the people yes. that work is being done, but you can't see it yet. Yeah. So yeah. whether we get some form of a, a, a forum or work with Regen to... And no, but there is, there is work, and we've all been yes. briefed on work that's been done, and um, that is going to be going out uh, into the community 
for them to be looking at um, in the next couple of weeks. So, and you there's, know, there's also confusion in the community uh, regarding the role of council and regenerate Christchurch. So, and that's often uh, confusion everywhere. So we need to address that as well and try and let people know that we are working together on this. Yeah. There's no, there's the advantage of the regeneration strategy and you know regenerate Christchurch is leading the work. Um, the advantage of a regeneration strategy is that we have the, the ability to um, change aspects of our district plan uh, through a regeneration plan. So it, it is a better approach. It is a way more engaged approach, and it doesn't involve multiple appeals to the Environment Court. So it's, it, it's a much better planning environment for actually dealing with challenging issues where we're looking to the future. Um, and not just looking at the present day environment. No, well, thank you for your time. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. I just, sorry, Leanne, I just, Leanne, I just wanted to make one quick comment on that report. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Is that okay? Yep. Oh, well, oh right. I just, to I just wanted to, um, I mean, Sorry, I forgot that you were there, and it's. Um... Well, yeah. several other people have, so <laughs> it's very quick. I just wanted to just just to praise. I think the idea of setting up local spaces where people can go and get information is a really positive thing. So setting up local um, shops or pop up shops, pop up spaces in communities where people can go is actually really good, and I think we should be considering doing more of it. But that's why they've they've got. So, I just want to acknowledge. I think that's. That's why they've got that. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, so I just wanted to acknowledge that. I thought that was a really good idea. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Regenerate Christchurch has done that. Right. Um, Sprague and Kashmir Community Board. We move that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Glenn, Glenn would like to move. <coughs> You notice in the report uh, that we need to uh, the need to get the agencies together over those working around the red zone with the community. A few events and activities taking them by surprise. The Gayhurst Road uh, bridge. We've just got a bit of a discrepancy between the residents' experience and the engineers' uh, report on that. So we have to. That's why we're having the on-site meeting. And with the Avonside. Girls and Shirley Boys zoning. While the ministry's come out with the interim zone, the preference is still for certainty. So it's a little bit like what we've been talking about over the South, South Shore and South View Brighton. Uh, residents want uh, certainty and permanence in a difficult situation. So you could you could say really that that um, you know that lack of certainty isn't confined to to one place. People want to know post quake where they stand, and, and, and uh, that's basically, I think, the issue for, for many over there. So moved by Glenn, seconded by Aaron. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Aye. Now we'll have Sprayed and Kashmir Community Board. Um, I just wanted to mention briefly, apropos uh, why Mary Fendleton, when they talked about the monarch butterflies, we've had the same person in our ward commenting about the number of um, butterflies that have been killed, and we've given the project $250 from our off the ground fund to ring the uh, relevant trees with um, steel to stop the rats getting up and killing the butterflies. Um, we have, like other places, do significant trees in various parts of our ward that um, house the butterflies over winter, and it's been quite apparent that they're not there this winter. I just want to comment bri briefly before we start on the um, the grants. It's just it's just the difference between a smaller ward and a smaller board area, sorry, and the rohi of the larger boards. Um, is that our grants took up a page this year and it used to be several pages and we do miss 
those projects in those areas and those suburbs that we have lost. And, but we still contribute, for instance, to um, Christchurch South Community Gardens Trust, who's over the way in central now, but whose work um, benefits our community too. Um, but we hope that if there's any more redrawing of the boundaries, that the board areas become more equal. Um, we are in the middle of the, um, of the long-standing riverbank stabilisation programme and the water engineers came to see us again, as they always do, to present brilliantly, as they always do, on the changes that are going to be occurring further down the Heathcote River um, in terms of our bank stabilisation. It is remarkable, some of the changes that are occurring to the Heathcote. The widening of the river... Um, is really apparent in some of our areas now and it demonstrates how the uh, rivers were deliberately narrowed and how that has contributed to the flooding that has occurred in recent years. And um, the widening of the river gives it much more natural appearance. Um, um, when we walked from the service centre at Beckenham over to look at the river, the river was tumbling down between its banks and looked very... Um, that doesn't look as natural as it's going to look because of the rocks that they have put in to stabilise the banks, but growth of the, uh, of the plantings will make a difference. But the river was tumbling down opposite the service centre. You almost felt as though you could get, it, get in, not me of course, but in a kayak and um, have a race down the river. And the um, outward appearance of the river is much more natural and we're, seeing, we're already seeing the benefits of it. It's a pity that we can't even make them wider. <coughs> in some areas, some of our river is, of course, drains instead of being a natural-looking river. And it'll be interesting to see um, if and when they do changes. For instance, in the Spraydon domain, it would be interesting to see it um, looking with reference to its um, the banks in the Spraydon domain if it goes anywhere near that. But it's a pleasure to have the drainage guys doing a presentation on this and a consultation, and the community, generally speaking, responds really well when the drainage guys respond. They also consult with us on their plantings. Our board favours um, native tree plantings, and especially the noble trees. If we can get a totra or um, kahikatea in, we will and we have had support from the water engineers on that as well. And apropos of that, we often see, far too often actually, contractors putting in random trees in random places on our riverbanks. They just appear. And they've got no, there's, there's no design or seeming intent. And one um, cypress appeared down um, at the Heathcote near the Ashgrove Reserve. The Ashgrove Reserve is recent, um, the uh, Lower Kashmir Residents Association has recently become the Kaitiaki of the Ashgrove Reserve, and they're restoring the native plantings in it and doing such a good job, and there are three kauri in there, for God's sake. Um, and so, so they're working really hard in there, and all of a sudden the cypress appears. And they asked why, and we had a great response from the arborist who has had the cypress removed, but I don't know why those random plantings occur. Well, um, we launched on July the 4th, um, the age-friendly sprayed in Kashmir um, uh, project. Um, when I hear the words age-friendly, I want to rest my head gently on the desk <laughs> and have a quiet doze. Um, that's what the senior... It emanates from Wellington, and the senior citizens' office calls it age-friendly. I do hope we change it. Um, I made an introductory remark that referred to the fact that this generation that is ageing now are the generation that invented sex, drugs and rock and roll. And I've often said that before. And this is a generation that was a generation when generations weren't talked about. In the, and when this group were born in post-World War II, generations weren't remarked on, teenagers didn't exist. Generations now exist ad infinitum. And this generation isn't going to tolerate the patronising crap that gets delivered to older people. I have great hope that this generation makes a nuisance of itself, <laughs> um, as they have done before. And I'm hoping that they'll lead the way for the ageing generations to come, of which you are all members, <laughs> and um, that they will cause um, a bit of a stir in our neighbourhood 
to ensure that ageing is not treated the way it has been in the past and is treated as inevitable and bold and fun. fun. It's actually fun. And I can tell you from first hand experience. So we did have, uh, we had Diane Turner from the Senior Citizens Office and Simon Templeton from Age Concern and Helene Mountner presenting to the audience. But I'm hoping that, and, and they did a great job and it was great to have them there. But I am hoping that the group, when it's convened and starts at work, starts to think adventurously and with excitement about the ageing. And just apropos of that, I, um, yesterday at, and there were people there from here, um, the Housing Network had uh, Kay Savile Smith speaking about the ageing and rental properties and the decline in home ownership um, from t the beginning of this century, 2000, to now is startling. And it's most startling in the 40 to 45 age group area. Mm -hmm. So the housing issues, thank God the Christchurch City Council of all local bodies leads in, in talking about housing and social housing. And I'm really personally very grateful for that. Um, the Spraden um, Kashmir, we used to have, um, for instance, an event in Barrington Park, but the staff recognised, and the staff recognised this before we elected members probably, that it no longer looked like an event that was led by the community and was, an, uh, and was supportive of community development. They recognised that, uh, that the people who participated in this event were becoming increasingly commercial and, and, and there was no longer groups of people in, enjoying community development. So they've, we've, we've, we've canned that particular event, but asked the community to think of events that they care about and that would support community development in their area and to support that, the community development staff have a get go, um, get set go workshop to talk to community groups about community development and about event management. And we've had considerable success in, the, for instance, the Rowley community in developing the, um, the project around the basketball lights and in making the Hoon Hay Fiesta a much larger event and the Rugby League has become involved, the, and including the Pacific Festival, and the schools in that area have become involved, and the schools in that area have become involved because the, um, the, uh, the cultural event that's held for schools is too expensive for them. It's too expensive for them. So they're developing their own programme around um, a Hoon Hay Fiesta. And the community development team in our ward are working to support that energy and drive that's coming from the community. And we, we are finding it very, very interesting. And I actually must get to go to one of those um, workshops myself and actually learn something about it too. Um, we, we had, uh, the community board pamphlet is being developed after Mel's nagged for six years, I think. And we'll be going out with, this, uh, with the second rates notice and we'll no doubt after people have sat down quietly on receiving their rates notice um, and might um, become more conscious in terms of reading something, will no doubt be taken up with interest by the people who receive it. Um, the, and the final thing, on the same day as the senior citizens, uh, sorry, as the age friendly, we presented to Jeremy Agar um, of the uh, Summit Road Society, and there he is, a very large cheque for 45000 for Predator Free. Mm -hmm. And we were absolutely delighted. Jeremy had a tear in his eye. <laughs> he has worked so hard on this project. It was led by him. The Summit Road Society was originally a bit thoughtful about the effort it might take and whether they could um, find the financing for it. Um, it requires really good statistical collecting, but on the, uh, on the weekend after Jeremy got, took the cheque off us for $45,000 for Predator Free, there were over 200 people at a workshop at St Martin's School on how to become Predator Free. It's a triumph in our area. I know it's a triumph elsewhere in Canterbury, but in our area we've taken this issue on at a personal level, and we are thrilled with the results 
thrilled with the Summit Road Society, very proud of Jeremy's work um, and the work that he's put into the Summit Road Society and the wider community everywhere on Predator Free. And there are some of the kids as well who got some t-shirts for a separate prize on how on, on um, drawing designer t shirt. Designer t shirt. And they got separate prizes on um, the designs of their t shirts in, about predator free. So and is that it from us? Yes it is, I think. Fantastic. Tim you'd like to move that and fill with like And, to and it. just note Leanne, our group we didn't take up the time. You know, the time? We we only took up our time. We didn't take up time. No. No. We were on punctual. 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 You stopped it dead on ten minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. But congratulations mm -hmm. to the board. I just think um, going out and, and actually uh, engaging with the community about how they can take control of things. It's uh, it's it's wonderful. So yep. really, congratulations. Uh, credit to the staff on that. Very much credit to the staff. Phil, yep. Pauline. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, look, thank you for your report. And you've touched on, I guess, some quite high-level strategic issues too, if it comes to older people and shorter, their unaf housing being unaffordable. And it's just how, and perhaps, in f and you, you certainly acknowledge that council have a strong history in that social housing area. I'm just wondering, uh, while I consider it, how, in fact, we have all this joined up, the work that our housing committee do, and Glenn was at the seminar yesterday too, um, and, and that the, the, the group, that the age-friendly group in Kashmir, and then of course what we really need is that, as Kay Savile said, is how in fact we make sure that the silos at central government level are broken down so that every government department is involved with this issue. Yeah. But perhaps that's something for future exploration so we actually become strategic about this. Yeah. Pauline? I'm really concerned about this monarch butterfly um, business because when it was first brought to my attention with the Abbey Park issue, um, and um, I think I forwarded it to the appropriate board because we've lost Abbey Park. Um, but as a staff response, um, they could not actually 100% confirm that it was rats. Has your board asked those questions about what it actually the is? The same woman came oh, yes, yes, was in know. our board area yeah. and she is very firm that it is rats because they, the wings are left and the bodies are gone. Yeah, but even though, I know she gave me all those photos, but even though staff have come back and said they can't confirm that it is actually rats, so Could is anyone doing any more investigative not work that on I this? Know. It's not in our board area. So do they think it is rats? Definitely. And the other thing is we need to get the feedback on whether the rings are actually working. and um, Because it seems to be that it's city-wide. It is. So you've got Sprayden, yeah. you've got um, Abberley Park and Burnside Park, just the three that have been noted. No, well, Beckenham Park's got a huge monarch butterfly tree with no monarchs in it right. this year. Oh. Yeah, rats don't recognise the ward boundary. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that, and it could actually be a... Um, it could actually be an aftermath of the quake as well, because we did have a huge rat explosion of population in the CBD, and they're probably moving outwards. There used to be a really big tree in um, the Burwood Pegasus area around that walkway around Lake Terrace Road. There was a big tree there with monarchs in it. I don't know if they're still there. I think, Pauline, we should get a staff member who's just hanging around doing nothing. <laughs> um, and... No, I do. I but it would be nice think, to know, just, though. I'm just yeah. trying to work out with the chief executive, is, is there a committee that this can get a report back to? So that, I mean, there's, work, there's a working group going on. So there's a working group within council. So it is being addressed. OK, well, probably so through ITI would be, the environment would be... We could have a monarch yep. chair. Well, I'd be, I'd be happy for it to come through mine. I'm quite Who's passionate queen? about it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, okay. So, so, so is it is it possible to arrange a briefing for the for the ITI committee just on where the program's up to? Great. Uh, Thank you. That'd we have a, we have a park ranger in our ward who's been involved in this issue, yeah. and so it would be good to tap into those people who already have some knowledge. Like yeah. yeah. Which park ranger can you remember? Yeah. The, 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 look, the coming coming says that there is there is a group within council that is addressing this. Yeah. So we'll just get a an update report through to ITI, um, and then we can refer it to all of the community boards because it will be across the city. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Patrick. Um, yes. New thank Zealand's you. Thank you very much.
That's very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're moving right along. <laughs> um, so it's been moved by Tim, seconded by Phil. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. And the next one is the uh, Papanui Innes Community Board. Go the Crusaders just quietly. Okay, so. Um, red and black, very good. Red and black, yep. Thank you very much for having us uh, along today. Um, I will look at this while we are talking. Have we got... Thank you. Um, uh, not a lot, actually. I just want to say that I think that the Fendleton Waimari Hillwood Board has set a very high bar with their presentations today, but quite clearly has too much time on their hands and possibly too much budget. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, they had <laughs> video, for God's sake. Um, yeah, look, there's a lot happening in the community at the moment with community groups and uh, youth agencies in the area. One organisation uh, that we have a lot to do with and has a lot to do with us is the Papanui Youth Development, which continues to provide uh, brilliant programmes and events in partnership with the local youth agencies to Oraho, the Belfast Community Network and... North City and PYD is a standout youth facility in Christchurch and it was built in partnership which of course is really important and it strengthens the, the organisation and those involved. It was a partnership 11 years ago between the Christchurch City Council and the Anglican Church and they provide within PYD for the youth in the area a craft room, a radio station, a climbing wall, basketball courts, computer suites. PlayStation room and recording studios. So it's a really fantastic facility for the youth in our area and they're very well connected as well uh, and well respected and trusted because that's a really important part of the relationship too. Um, they have a new program at PYD, it's called Pikiake, which is uh, Ascending to New Heights and it offers breakfast and mentoring sessions along with a life skills program called Legacy and it operates out of Casebrook Intermediate School and it also works together with some reasonably high profile sports people too which is a, a great connection to have. Two of the things happening in our ward at the moment um, is, well this is an extra one actually, it's, uh, this is our St Albans Park and Pavilion r project. The pavilion is ahead, well the, the project is overall behind but only because of the wet weather and what the effect is on the on the grass growing and the, I mean you could canoe out there at one stage last month uh, but the pavilion is just about done and we've got a board visit to the pavilion this Friday and this was put together, the program was developed, the building was, was signed off after talking to groups in the area and finding out what they needed in the building and that was a really good process because I think the board kind of went yeah we need changing rooms, yeah we need a kitchen but actually when we talked to the groups it was clear that space could be better utilised so that was a really good uh, project or, or process as well. Don't talk to me about the colour, right. Just moving on, uh, drawing a discreet veil over the St Albans Park and Pavilion colour scheme, we'll move to the next image, um, which uh, I don't really want to include that in our presentation at this stage. Uh, we're still getting, well not still, we always get some really cool stories coming back from youth in our ward as well. And I have to say that Emma Norrish, the Deputy Chair, has really picked up um, you know, the mantle on, on the youth in our, is she the youngest on our board, Pauline? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> so she is um, very proactive in the area of youth engagement and we're seeing this with uh, these two that came to see us, Travis Baldwin and Kaylin Lewis. Uh, talked about what a huge difference in their lives this project made going on the Spirit of Adventure Trophy. And I think it was Travis's mum was there and, and she said that she saw a really amazing positive change in Travis when he came back from it. Just um, Did she say he was keeping his room tidier? I think the space that they had on the, on the boat was so small that they had to work really hard to keep it tight. But, you know, these young people come and talk to us, they put together a presentation and they look us straight in the eye and I think most of the board would agree that this is one of the, the highlights of the work that we do on the board is hearing that um, feedback from the young people in our ward. Uh, a lot of planting going on in the ward at the moment. This is the Matariki dawn planting that was on the 15th of July. 
um, out in Oruiha and um, yeah again very wet I mean it's been a wet last few weeks actually and then we had some more planting uh, at the Kaputahai Creek and that was with the um, University of Florida students which got a bit of media coverage as well and another planting day on the 25th and that's board member John Stringer in the top right there he went along to represent uh, the board uh, who worked with the student army on this um, what have we got next? Oh, and that's it. So a couple of things just I wanted to raise before we finish. There are two main bits of work going on in the ward at the moment as far as consultation goes. The first one is the Cranford Street Downstream Effects Management Plan Project. Um, now a letter's been sent to all submitters and look, I have to say we have found that there are four or five submitters that have not received those letters. So we're just following up where that gap uh, is and why that happened. We received 407 submissions in total. And on August the 6th, which is next Monday, the community board is giving the submitters and we'll hear from submitters who've said they'd like to be heard. The process here is that there is an independent engineering expert, Dr Shane Turner, and he's going to attend the meeting on Monday. He will then draft a report which will be referred to you as councillors and will then proceed to a council decision. But that decision will be consulted on again within the community. Something that we're making very clear in all of our communications at the moment is that we are consulting above and beyond what is normally required for a project like this. Um, and that's because we know how important this project is to everyone in the ward and how controversial it is, let's be frank, it's, it's getting a bit of coverage and there are, we're not going to please everyone on this, we know that. Um, but uh, we're not required to consult to this level. The, the condition and the designation for the road does make clear uh, that the board uh, or the council has to consider mitigation for this project. So it's actually part of the designation. Um, so um, we think that that is proceeding the way it should at the moment. The other one is the bus... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Christine? Priority. Thank you, the bus priority on Main North Road. Uh, and that is quite a... Um, I don't want to use the word fraught. It is a controversial part of, of um, or one of the controversial consultations in our ward at the moment as well. Uh, there's been some reports on removal of parking and things like that, and as you will all know, that's often an issue that sort of um, gets people going. But that's about all at the moment. We are finding that there is a huge pressure on our ward staff. Um, they are all working extremely hard, helping with the newsletter, helping with the inquiries that we're getting and the engagement that we're getting from members of the community. Um, we have made clear as a board that if there are concerns or issues around workload that that needs to be communicated to us. We cannot be dropping balls when it comes to these important consultations and engagement with the community um, and so we want to make sure that that doesn't happen any more than it is at the moment. But, um, <coughs> I just had um, a question which um, is in relation to a different consultation. So I'm really pleased to see that the community board's engaging at the same time as they can on the changes to the bus route, which was part of a successful campaign, I think, by the um, retirement village in there to get the bus rerouted with the changes that are happening in the area to ensure that older people could catch the bus and staff could catch the bus too, that's, a, that's good. But um, why are there no, bu no bus stop signs outside the shops that I go to um, down in this road? Surely you mean you're, currently? Yeah, surely you're not going to take the parking outside that little bit of shops and put a bus stop there, are you? Uh, that is part of the process and the suggestion at the moment, but that is not... But that's our consultation. Yes. So why did the community board choose that as the location for the bus stop? We didn't. We were presented with that as the consultation or the, the project that they were consulting on. But it's, it's our part of the project. I understand that, and the community board... To be perfectly honest, the community board was unaware that there would be that number of parks or indeed any parks removed from there. We do have a little bit of, well, we have much concern actually about this consultation. We feel that it is, um, 
we are consulting with ECAN at the same time, but it seems confused, in, in my opinion anyway, and some of the community aren't aware of who's consulting on which bit and to whom they send their information to. As far as the loss of the parking goes, and I think the councillors might like to speak on this, I know that Mike Davidson's been engaged with the businesses down there. We've been back through the presentation that we had at the community board, mm -hmm. and I have checked with staff. We do not recall being told that there were going to be up to eight car parks removed from outside those shops. In fact, eight car parks equates to the entire length of those shops just about. So I've been down there as well. Mm. But I mean, we, the community board will have delegation over there. So we're not going to just go along with it. Hang on, hang on. on. But this is, what, this is what I'm confused about. Was the community board, did the community board actually sign off on the project no, no, no. to be no. consulted on? No. So can no. anyone tell me why that was the case? Because it's the community board's role to sign off on the consultation. It, that we, 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 we didn't delegate, or the, no. we, we don't have the power to delegate that to ECAN. As I understood it, from the Joint Committee's um, uh, point, Public Transport Committee's perspective, yeah. it was agreed that it would be excellent to consult the community at the same time. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you delegate the decision making to someone else. So no, who no, decided the who decided what went out to the public as far as the location so of the bus stops? The engagement team, because the community board, we had a briefing. We didn't see the final consultation document. Was your briefing from ECAN? Both. No, no. no both. And yeah. and we were not, as Ellie has, has um, said, we were not made aware that there was going to be car park losses outside those businesses. We knew that there would be some car park losses possibly on Mars Road. And that was not brought to our attention, and especially not that number. So um, there seems to have been some sort of a, um, a glitch there. Well, yes, we, yeah, yeah, we have delegation, and okay. we will yes. have a proper process. Christine's going to follow this up from a staff perspective, yep. perspective today. I think what is really important here too, and I'm so glad you've raised it, that it came to us essentially signed and sealed and ready to go, and yeah. actually signed and sealed without the full information. So when we as board members and as our councillors engage with residents, either face-to-face -face or via email, it is very embarrassing to be informed of something of which we are unaware yeah. by the people who are affected by it. So yeah, there's certainly a problem in the process here, and Christina will be following it up from a staff perspective, but we will be from a elected well, um, members I, I, as well. I just saw, I saw the signs. Yeah. It, it is a, a, a shopping area that mm. I go to frequently, one, very good coffee at Michael's Cafe, and uh, two, I often buy flowers at the flower shop. Yeah, right. And um, not that I eat fish and chips very often, but they're very good as well. So um, I'm just saying it's a very handy little um, shopping centre, but it is completely dependent on parking. Yeah. There is. are several issues that have come out of this that raise concerns and we are following them up. Okay, all right. Um, well, that's my submission. Thank you. Um, Sarah, <laughs> Phil, Tim. If I could just channel Yanni for a couple of minutes. Um, well, I, I, I'll do a minute rather than a couple. And we frequently get um, sent through um, consultations as a heads up. So we get an email saying, hey, we're about to go and consult on this. This is what the documents are. And we don't get to sign them off as a board. And I know yanni has been asking, and we've been asking as a board um, relatively frequently now to say, hey, can it come to us for sign off before it goes out for consultation? But usually it doesn't unless we get a heads up at far enough heat of time for us to say, hey, listen, we're not happy with this. Yeah, I, th I think and we're going to have to, we, we to investigate. There are some things that wouldn't go to a community board for sign-off first, yeah. but there are other things that would, and this is one that would because it's absolutely crystal clear. It's the decision-making sits with the community board, and uh, they should have signed off Landscape on plans for what parks we and all those things that are community board delegations, and they don't come to us first for sign-off for yeah, consultation well, I, documents. I mean, we'd have to look at what all of them are. So anyway, Phil, Tim. Oh, Leanne, I've raised this issue a number of times, but I think it's, time, it's really time that we've got clarification about the process of signing off all the consultations, where they go, and especially when, if, for example, it's a community board project. Tim. Um, no, with our visit, uh, resident survey, we, we had you know, the questions about satisfaction, etc. So we've got to be so careful when we go out for consultation, and we do a lot of it. So. I'm just surprised that with this, 
when you ask for going to consultation and you ask for submissions, isn't it a standard to say, and if you would like your submission heard, or if you would like to be heard, but now it seems that this wasn't done, and we're going out for a, a sending a letter out to say, if you'd like to be heard. No. No, what, what it was was uh, it was it was always communicated that you would be able to speak to your submission. The letter is just to confirm the date, the time, and would you like to book? Because when you've got 407 submissions, mm. and at the moment I think we're sitting at around 25 or 30 people coming in to talk, we need to essentially have an RSVP yep. system set yep. up. So it was always made clear in all of the collateral and information about the process that people would be able to speak to their submission. But, but surely we would do should do that in one go because we're doubling up staff time and the fact that well, we. Well, the, 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 the trouble, I mean, and th this is where I'll go back to signing off on consultation mm -hmm. documents. The original awesome. consultation document didn't set out, it set out a timeline, but it didn't set out, you know, we're doing this because we're required to by a resource consent condition. You know, there's going to be an independent um, report done off this. That person's going to be sitting in the, on the hearing. Are we talking about two different things? Are you talking about Cranford Street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's talking about the letter that went out to the submitters after the submissions. Were, this is for Cranford Street, CNC, downstream. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I beg your pardon, sorry. Yeah, I'm but, sorry. Cran but the downstream, sorry. Yep. the original mm -hmm. consultation document yep. didn't set out what was actually why didn't set out the why what why are we doing it this particular way right you know that there's an independent expert being appointed and blah 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 yeah. what the letter has done has actually set all of that out so it's actually explained the process which um wasn't done in the original consultation document which is good yeah you know that the, the explanation letter is excellent but i think also too because this is such a long process and you'll all be aware how long the cnc has been going we need to be regularly re-engaging with yes. the community as well because you can't send something out six, seven, eight, nine months ago no. and then assume that it's on people's radar as that date approaches. So that's Which is why reason. having a, a, an email tree yes. as well and constantly sending updates. I mean, the implications for the downstream effects um, are, are, won't be implemented until there's been a you know, sort of a 30% increase in traffic or something like that as a result of the downstream effects taking place. So we're talking 2020 and beyond. So it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's something that's going to be... No, but with respect, we need to also be ready to implement it or even be implementing it prior to it becoming a problem because the last thing we want to be doing is putting something in in an area where the traffic has increased 30%. Yeah, I think um, I was quoting from the resource consent, but I may have right. got that wrong. Yeah. No, I think it has to be... It has Do we lose them? It has to be in before yeah, the Northern yeah, Arterial yeah, opens. Yeah. yeah. It has to be in before the arterial opens. Yes, the that's right. Yeah. So we won't wait for the problem to present itself. We have to have it in place before the problem becomes apparent yeah. so that we're not being reactive and, and putting yeah. it in place. But, um, yeah, I thought there were more layers to it than that. Oh, there are, no, you're right, there are, because there are varying levels of mitigation that exactly. can be applied to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, so, um, so who, who uh, Pauline Mike seconded. So I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you. Thank you. We'll need, we will need to get. Oh. Oh. Come on. Right. So, could we have the uh, Hallsville Hornby Riften Community Board? Sorry, a Leanne and councillors, and um, I'll talk about our, um, our new name, Waipuna, later on. But anyway, um, it gives us great pleasure to present our community board report to you today. And we have part A matters. Uh, 
the recommendation that the um, that we approve the parking restrictions and no, oh, no, that's not a part, eh? But the, the first one is that, <coughs> that we decline the approval under the are we under that one um, under the um, Reserve Act to um, to reclassify part of Deaton Park, which is a separate report coming later. So I did uh, try to seek guidance earlier. Um, in our um, chat before the meeting, Leanne, whether we um, whether we actually ask questions um, at this at this part of the meeting, or or be offered the opportunity to come to the table uh, when that matter, um, the reclassification of Denton Park, is um, is um, following our the area reports. So that's that's. Are you happy with that? Yep. Am I happy with, with you're, the process? You're at the table now, and then we're going straight on to Denton Park. Yes. So if you just deal with Denton Park at the end of the at the end of your presentation. That's fine. Okay. Um, and the approval of the the reclassification. So we'll move on then to the <coughs> the next thing is the approval of heavy vehicle restrictions on various roads. Within our uh, ward, that's something that's been an issue for quite a number of years. Actually, is the inability to actually pol police um, those heavy vehicle restrictions. But what we have now is the ability for um, for the the police, for example, to actually pull over a moving vehicle and issue them with an instant infringement notice. So prior to this, um, it hasn't been the case. You've actually had to summon somebody to court. So we're very, very pleased with that progress. And the other thing I just wanted to clarify is the um, approval to construct two pedestrian pathways on Richmond Drainage Reserve to adjacent to, um, there's a typo there, it's Knight's Stream School, not Knight Street School. So, um, we're very um, happy to project, uh, to progress with that, and the Ministry of Education is actually paying for that, which is um, quite astounding. Moving on then to the part A, we're going to talk about. I'd just like to take this opportunity again to actually thank the the panel, the hearings panel, and the staff that supported the hearings panel on this process. And, um, and I'm sure all the submitters that took part in that, either for or against, were very, very grateful for the efforts and the way that was um, that process was um, carried out. So uh, I know I did thank them at this at the extraordinary meeting, but I just take this opportunity now here today too to acknowledge the work of the panel and the staff supporting the panel. Other significant. Um, of oh, the next yeah, other significant projects in our board area are the strengthening community funds projects, which uh, they're um, that being processed. Quite a lot of those are being processed now, aren't they, Gary? So we're um, that's a work in progress. And the other partnerships with community <coughs> community and organisations is the New Zealand Institute of Sport Get Set Go workshop. So I understand that's been around other boards as well, taking part in that, Gary. So that's something that um, that we're really, really pleased to um, to give people the opportunity. Um, there's over 60 students have attended um, uh, tailored versions uh, workshops, specifically aimed at preparing them for future careers and working in community support, uh, community sport at least. So that's something that's really, really good. Moving on then to the Upper Rickerton, Upper Rickerton uh, War Memorial Library. That's a work in progress still, and so is the Althurst Memorial Hall. So we're still working with those communities to find resolutions and, and way forwards on both of those um, War M Memorial Library and War Memorial Hall. And the, um, <coughs> the very exciting infrastructure project update is Napunawai Sports Hub, of course. And um, you can see um, the exciting coloured 
photos. Is that um, just a question um, that I'd like to ask of staff around? Are those are those um, stand the the, the grandstand um, beams and and th are they coming from Jade Stadium because they look very similar to the ones that were above the Paul Kelly stand? No. They're not. Okay. Okay. Just just look very similar. So thanks for that, John. So um, the car park's all ready for use, and the um, the track's almost finished. It's all it needs is <coughs> at the time of this report was the um, was the staggered lines of where you start, so that the person on the outside of the track doesn't have to run any different distance from the person on the inside lane. So and we're all well aware of that us athletes that have been running around tracks like that. The halls will domain sk <laughs> skate park update. <coughs> well. That's um, that's a work in progress, but it's due to be completed in in um, December. But the exciting thing is the night stream car park, uh, night stream skate park update, is not only coming on budget, but two months early. So I'd just like to really congratulate the team on that, and um, just let people know that if some they have problems with um, or should I not say anything about that oh is it okay <coughs> so anyway we've very been jealous. very very fortunate that we've been able to actually yeah. achieve what we have um, in Nightstream and it's a wonderful thing and it's actually opened now it is open now but it will be officially opened on Friday the 12th of October so because it's been been done Ahead of time, we didn't really want we didn't really want to have it fenced off until then, did we? No, and the community didn't, so the barriers are down and people can use it. So that's um, that's a um, a good news, very good news. Dean's Rickett and Road update. Unless there's any questions on that, that's pretty straightforward, I think. Um, but we're just waiting till the contracts are let for the next stage of Harakiki to Matapo so that um, we can set up, a, um, with the contractor, a way of communicating for the community to actually communicate with the contractor to, um, to answer any questions or resolve any outstanding issues on the way um, forward with this difficult engineering work. <coughs> Moving on then to um, the Look at race course, um, race course alcohol ban. So that's something that uh, comes around every year, and maybe one of these days it'll become permanent. The Templeton Community Submission Writing Workshop with council staff and the community have actually been working with the Templeton Residents Association um, to. Um, help them with compiling written submissions on and to the decision making process including resource consent applications and long term plan and local projects so um, I think that's a really good initiative from staff to actually get involved with the resident association and help them to put, get their head around thinking about what might happen um, when they if they need to make submissions when um, Selwyn District uh, Fulton Hogan actually Oh, you're saying time's up. I, I thought I was going to have a little bit more. Yeah, thank you. Um, so that's um, that's one. Yeah, wonderful me. <coughs> that's um, in the Rickett. <coughs> excuse me, in the Rickett area for children aged between eight and thirteen years to think positively about themselves. They're working with the University of Canterbury on that one. So that's um, that's a good news story. Um, the council's graffiti program, of course, is 10 years old, so there's a, an invitation to um, to an event in, um, coming up on that. And the community service awards, we did touch briefly on that at the last, but, <coughs> but here it is now. Um, Brother Jimmy is uh, is the um, the information on the community service and youth awards that we held in the Rickett and um, Racecourse Tea House, and we were. At and we were um, uh, entertained by the Iranian society with their excellent dancing. 
I'm moving on to the Hello Hornby event uh, for the next one ye next year in March next year as um, the planning for that is underway now as we speak. And um, <coughs> yeah, other matters, uh, progress you know, on the community plan and, and um, community board matters of interest. I'd just like to briefly say that, because um, it's mentioned here about um, the area around the, the old um, Addington sale yards, but it's uh, quite exciting that um, that the university are actually doing a, um, a a study, aren't they, into fly tipping in our ward, and they've asked our community board members for for areas. So it'll be interesting, and they they're going to give the feedback of this fly, uh, fly tipping investigation to our board. So <coughs> we'll probably have great pleasure in passing that on to the council as well as what they discover from that. So um, and the other is of course the. The uh, <coughs> Student Volunteer Army, um, that's, that's our star group, and it's really, really pleased to see that that's, um, that's sort of gone viral because it started here in Christchurch, as we know, um, at the time of the earthquakes, but um, it's, it's grown now to it's not only um, students, there's other people involved in that as well, and it was really um, moving to see the partnership with the... With the Majory Stoneman Douglas High School, um, the, some of the survivors from that um, tragedy coming out here and um, and um, being involved with our student volunteer army and, and community and planting some um, trees in Hallswell Quarry in recognition of that um, very, very sad event. So that's, um, and the other thing is, of course, the uh, helpful hand at random facts is uh, why Poon why Puna, which is um, why for water and Puna for spring, is very, very appropriate for our, our ward and we're very grateful to have received that at our last board meeting. And um, we, because we do have the headwaters of the, of the three rivers, starting from springs in our ward, so um, couldn't be more appropriate. And it's interesting to know that the <coughs> Ricket and stream goes, a lot of people don't realise it, but it goes directly, flows directly under the Westfield Moor and then pops back out on the other side of um, Division Street. Division Street, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, there we are. I won't ask, is there any questions? Because that's for you to ask, Madam uh, Leanne. Mike, uh, two questions. First one regarding to the Hello Hongbi. Yes. My understanding that this year when we organized uh, the committee members, but during that time the Great Hongbi Resident Association, they have not yet you know, established. I suggest uh, this time next year we should consider invite their chair or their committee member as in part of the committee member. Yep. You know, that's in the Hongbi area. Yep. We can make that. Um, we can we can yes. look at that. Yeah. So it's actually see, though, important to yeah. It's actually there. important to realise that that committee is not led by council. It's led by the community. Yes. Yes. So the community will decide who, who okay. who's on the committee, yeah. and council staff have no involvement in that. Okay. Second is uh, because of committee for meeting on twenty fourth July, committee for approve for some of the local law. You know, a local law ban for those the uh, the heavy the vehicle you mentioned earlier. Yep. I just want to know, that's a part of B or part of A, because today I didn't see this information. That's a, um, that's part, it's not a part A. It's part a, B, okay. Yes, yes In it is. part B, the, when will be the tax effect? I think it's effective as of already. now. Uh, that I'm not sure. Yeah, because sure. It, it, it already yesterday I got a phone call, you know, from the, uh, the same, the, the uh, same street, the, the resident. Yes. Still complain the, Heavy motor vehicles still pass through. It's on the gentleman. When will be the yeah. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. But we'll find out officially, but it's my understanding currently that it is effective now. So but I might be wrong. Those are signage you need yep. to install. Yes, the signage, is, signage is already there, brother. Okay. Signage is already thank there. You. has been for quite, enough, quite a, a, a few years, actually. It's just been difficult to enforce. That's, that's all. Thank you. Aaron, did you have a question? 
Yeah, I just did around Mike on the um, property review process because it's <coughs> come around all the boards, and your boards opted to retain everything. Uh, we opted to sell everything because um, we're you know trying to chip into is the. Is that the same paper? And the, the, it's a well, Pardo. Are we dealing with it separately? Yeah. Okay, I'll wait. Okay. Um, so could we? Um, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Aye. That's carried. Um, and we'll move on to the Denton Park paper. Did you want to make a comment about that? Or I was actually going to get the chair of the... Oh, no, I suppose it's... No, it's all right. Okay, yeah. yeah. If you... Did you want to make a comment about it? Um, <coughs> other than um, that was our that was our board um, resolution to receive the the hearings panel's recommendation um, with with a with an addition and when that was um, when that was put it was put unanimously at the board so um, I'm just quite happy to um, and with the help of of Sarah if need be to answer any questions. I understand that there's going to be another resolution added to this one, which says that uh, request staff to report back to the 13th of September 2018 council meeting on a process for progressing as quickly as possible the assessment of site options and the development of the proposed library service centre in South West um, Leisure Centre in Hornby, notwithstanding the earlier decision to approve Denton Park as the preferred location. Is that that's an amendment that was um, that was is, is going to come down. Is the process um, is that the process from here is made clear as quickly as possible because this has created an enormous delay in the creation. But do, of this do, do, do we need to revoke the earlier decision? We can provide that advice back to you. But actually, we, we don't it? need advice based on their decision not to change reserve status. We could simply revoke the decision of the 21st, 24th of August 2017 oh, yeah. and request staff to report back on a new process. In, ter in terms of process, standing order says that any decision or any recommendation to revoke an earlier resolution requires must, 75 come from, must come from the chief executive with two days working days notice. Now we haven't done that and we weren't contemplating doing that right now. We just felt that we should at least note the fact that there had been that earlier resolution. When we come back to you, there will probably be a recommendation that we revoke that earlier well, resolution. Can we request after report back or request the chief executive then to report mm -hmm. back and uh, was it the 6th of September? Is that the appropriate date? No. Okay. So if we yes. yeah. so if we request the chief executive to report report back on a proposal to revoke the um, decision of the 24th of August and um, to provide advice on a process so just the rest of the words and then get rid of the brackets. Yeah, but that's got requests, geotechnical investigations of Kyle Park. Hmm? No, 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 it was August. August. All right. Um, sorry. So, uh, hang on. But I'm, I'm, but there, there are some questions, so I'm going to have to decide where the questions are directed to. So it may well be staff. So. Um, it might be more appropriate rather than community board. Um, I just just yeah. wanted to clarify that the date of the resolution that you're referring to was it the date of the meeting of the of the halls will home be written and community board no. or the or the it's meeting the of uh, where that outcome came to the council. The council. The council. The council. 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 I'm, I'm talking about the historic yeah, end in August. August. That's probably yeah, 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 the, council. Yeah, the council meeting. There was the council resolution. All right. So, um, so has anyone got any questions of Mike? And if not, we'll 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 say thank you to you, and then we'll get um, start. 
regarding police recommendation, in particular at uh, paragraph 3, I just want to know if a paragraph 5 should be included in paragraph 3. The paragraph 3, Kyle Park uh, undertake uh, lost, uh, the the geotech uh, investigation should be the first uh, priority. It is. We it's, need it to is. define it clearly. It yeah. it is. It's on underway now. It's yeah, yeah. Now. The other way now is not undertaken, just the uh, initial uh, uh, subcontract with the possible uh, the consulting company. It says as soon as possible. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing there's nothing further that we can do from a and governance for, perspective than ask for it to be done as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah, because why I emphasize mm -hmm. this one? Yeah. Because based on the possible location of, the, of the, the, this the new facility to be built up to, based on the last year, even the this year, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, couple of times the, the location, the majority of people still prefer the, uh, the, in the Kyo Park, etc. So, so we need yeah. to define it more clearly. This is the first Councilor part. Chen, I'm just going yes. to ask that we don't go into the, the decision making area. So if we just focus on what this says and it's requesting that the geotech investigations happen as quickly as possible. Staff are going out to tender okay. um, because it's not something that we've got internal expertise in relation to. It will be going out to get a contractor to do that work for us immediately. Okay. So thank you. Um, all right. So uh, Raf. Yeah, just following up on what you said about the geotech, there were two things there. One thing you said it was happening right now, and now, then you said it was going out for tender. Yeah, it's going out for tender. It's progress so progressive. It's progressive. happening. And where, which budget it is, is it going to come out of? Uh, the budget for the project. It, it's the, the, the council approved project budget. Yeah. Okay. Right. Are we going to make a decision on that when we get the, the tender back? In terms of how much it's going to cost to do the geotech? Uh, or not, you're not Normally that would be uh, delegated to the, uh, the, the, the project team. You wouldn't expect the council to make a, uh, an individual call on a small part of a project like this. Because okay, there were some big numbers thrown around during the process. That, that was for the decontamination. For the remediation yes. and de decontamination. Okay. Right. This is just the de geotechnical right. assessment okay. of the yeah. site. Okay. Um, and in terms of the the options for this, is there an assumption that we are planning to progress with the same options, i.e. a joint um, a joint system? No, I no. That, that was part of the issue that we need to actually go back and relook at all of those things. Yeah, because it says that the, the development of the proposed library service centre and, and ledger centre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, my it doesn't say one site, one, it doesn't say one entity. Okay. It's well, sufficiently it the broad, the but it, it would have it to come back to us for a decision yes. on that, right. either which way. Mm. Yeah. Everything okay. comes back now for a decision. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I just had a question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is very eerie, Yanni. Sorry, your your image has now been restored. So far away. Oh great, I just want to, I, it's really a question of both the board and the staff, but given you know, that it's really important that we aim to continuously improve how we make good decisions, um, is there any, has there been any consideration given to some sort of audit review of this whole process to see what lessons we could learn from it? No. <laughs> As, as I understand it, staff are getting together and, and working through the process that's been followed mm -hmm. and where it could be improved or any issues that might come out of it. So there is a review um, underway internally. But the community board's not involved in it at this stage. Um, I, I just, I mean, I guess in light of our residence survey, in light of the um, the whole process around us and the additional costs we're now incurring. I do think maybe if we could get a memo around what sort of lessons learned processes in the way, I think that would be really, really helpful. Thank you. Yes, that, that, that will be done. Thank you. All right, well, we'll go. Uh, one, more question. one more question. Yeah, yeah, okay. If the Kyle Park, the geotech the, uh, investigation, uh, we go to the tender in the system, I just want to know, you know, regarding Kyle Park, 
we, we probably need to request for proposal you know, to define clearly request a possible contractor, follow our request. So my question is, which area, how big area, how deep we need to undertake this uh, geotech investigation? And also, uh, I was told uh, by, uh, by, by the community, whether we consider to take the ground uh, penetrating the radar system, do it more kind of thoughtfully, this I suggest should be considered as part of our request for proposal. So who can, who can answer my question? That's a great question. Um, Lee. We're just in the process of going out for a proposal, so it's far too early to answer that at the moment. So we will come back to you as soon as we can. We are obviously keen to move forward as quickly as we can. Um, but we're going out to the market for a proposal currently, sir. So. Yeah, but, but my concern is you need to consider this one. Staff should be considered this factor, you know. Yeah. Not to miss out any possible. Absolutely, because there is other stakeholders there. We have got a BMX track there. There is other impacted parties. So, yeah, we'd absolutely okay. look at that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so do I have a, a mover and a second? I do. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I will have Councillor Jimmy Chen would move and um, seconded by Sarah. Um, I will put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Aye. That's carried. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, was that an aye? Yeah. <laughs> It was, it was a delay. It was a delay. Yeah. And, um, and thank you, Sarah, too, for, for chairing the hearings committee. Um, the feedback was extremely positive, so we're very, very pleased. So thank you for taking on that role. All right, thank, thank you. you very thank much. You. Oh, then the property review. Oh, the property review. So. Okay, right, okay. Um, so, uh, did you want to just briefly introduce this one, or uh, uh, does staff want to introduce it? Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, oh, sorry. I'm I said, yeah, well, I was just asking the question. Do we. I'll, I'll introduce it. <laughs> because I know that Aaron's got a question for you, so just, we could go straight to the question if you like. Yeah, I'm quite happy. Fire, okay. Fire. Aaron, far away. Times now. Yeah, so just um, you, there's a lot of properties there, you guys, and some of them I can understand why you'd, you'd keep them. Um, one that stood out for me was Main South Road, uh, the old service centre, um, because it's quite an eyesore for the public these days, and that'd be a lot better developed into saying and it's worth several million dollars. Why did that one not make the list, if any? Um, <coughs> well, because it's, it, it was the way it was derived originally. It's um, deemed to be, it would have to go through the Crown land um, disposal process. It's also part of that site, is, is a, um, it was a, a previous quarry back in its day. The, some of the buildings are subsiding, but we, are, we have seen a signal that we do want the demolition of that service centre building um, done ASAP, so that signal's gone through. But there's also um, there's some other issues that need to be resolved before the final, and I don't know whether we'd want to talk about them just yet. Like, for example, well, the, the, the Milton Street Yard, you know, maybe. Oh, yeah, but there's also been um, plans to put a road link yes, through sure. there as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. there's some unresolved transport planning issues associated with it. And um, just to clarify, what Mike said about it is Crown derived, so Council wouldn't actually get any money from it. So we'd have to return it to the Crown. So I, I think it's quite a sensible decision that we sit on it strategically until we A, resolve the transport issues, it's got some infrastructure on it, and, and some of those issues before we go making decisions about it. Because we, we may still want it for a community purpose down the track. And it's, um, although it's an eyesore, and there is a report going to the board to tidy that up. Uh, I think next month. So. It's quite a long list with a few dividends. The dividends are, um, are yet to come as things evolve. Right, you sound like dividends the for the community. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. 
Um, uh, Dion. The property is on uh, Heskett's Road. Are they occupied at the moment? A couple of them are, yes. Just two of them. Short term tenancies. Because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight resident or eight lifestyle blocks around there. One of them is not owned by the council, is that right? That's right, so housing, um, New, housing New Zealand and that's, um, that's got um, um, people in there that are, that are very comfortable with their um, abode and their location mm. and, very, and uh, haven't got any issues and is, yeah. um, to do with the noise from, um, from the speed rail rule. Yeah, so, so I mean that, that leads on to the next question I had. I mean it says in the report here that the land should not be used for the land is not to be used for permanent residential use. That was the resolution of the council in the day when it was when they were per purchased. Yeah, I mean, is that is that still the case? Because I, I mean, there's four million dollars worth of land that we're sitting on. What well, land and property that we're sitting on there? No, well, more than that. I think. It's I just it is it it's four and a half million dollars. It just seems, put it on the market. It'd be more yeah, than I mean, it just seems like. Uh, these there's, there's properties on there that aren't been used that the council own actually. Why are we not utilising them in some way? Or, um, yeah, I, yeah, they just seem like a petrol head would love to live there. It, correct. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was still, it, it, it is still the existing it. council resolution that we do not put permanent residents in there. So the ones where there are habitable houses and we've tenanted that yeah. out, those there are on a temporary basis, not permanent. Um, the value is somewhat affected if we're going to, if the council is going to control use. So they might be valuable as lifestyle blocks if you can put a permanent residence and house on them, but that is not what the council has resolved and wants to do. So that therefore significantly limits the value of the properties to being additional rural land for adjoining blocks maybe. Well, so what is the underlying land use at the moment? It's rural too. Under the old district plan, it was rural too. What about the new district plan? Does anybody know? Similar. I think it's similar, yeah. Similar. Oh, sorry, it was rural five. It's rural two now. It was rural five under the old district plan, which was one of the most noise sensitive rural zoning you could have. In fact, you couldn't hardly, under that noise restriction, you couldn't hardly start up a chainsaw because your next door neighbour could complain about it. <coughs> no, rural, anyway, it that, says on the rural that's, five. That's what caused Sorry. some of the issues with, I um, have looked at that. with, with rural Puna. Mm. Yeah, it says rural five. I, I just, five, yeah. I mean, when was the decision of the last, when was the decision made for, or that previous resolution made? Um, the previous resolution was made when it was before the, um, before the district plan review. In fact, it was before the earthquakes. So how long have we owned these properties? Um, it'd probably be, probably close to, Ten years, I would say. I actually, just I, I actually think we should actually look at that resolution and look at these properties in a little bit more detail than just say keep them because um, I, there, there's there's quite a lot of capital wound up there, and I, I there are people around currently. Um, I'm not speaking out of turn. Would like to showing interest. No, I mean in I, either I, in either renting leasing. Yeah, I mean, I'm an electric car user, but I wouldn't mind living next to a petrol head place. It would sound great. But um, I just, I do think, I mean, I don't know how we can, if there was any appetite there, but I think there's these ones that, that um, you know, these properties at Haskett's Road probably need a little bit more closer look than just letting them lie. Because, I mean, there's houses, two out of five houses for that, yeah. used. For, for that location as well. Absolutely. Mm. And, and can I say, you could keep those properties potentially for some linked linked to in fact motorsport. We've got a regional motorsport at Rupuna. Mm. I was one of the ones on a different side to my over noise levels. Um, I think the previous council, the one before that, bought the properties to stop the problems for those residents. But I think there's a long term strategy yeah. to hold them for some activity that's linked to in fact motorsport. Okay, so does the board support rather than just retaining the following properties for for future strategic purpose actually maybe for these specific properties actually start a process of actually looking more in detail over those because I think, I think, I think, the, I think the purpose of having them mm. in that category is that we do look at them mm. in the future make the exact decisions you're talking about yeah but I mean there's this it just 
I mean, that is just sitting on the land. I actually think I'd rather us sort of be a bit more proactive and actually within maybe a resolution within this to actually be a bit more proactive on these specific properties because there is, it just seems of all of them that actually there's, there's a bit more use that can be, I've just been told that only two of them have been used. There's five properties there. I think what you might be suggesting then is, because um, th that's the intent, is to look at these as you're saying you want them prioritised, and we do these ones sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, that just seems logical mm -hmm. that they're sitting there mm -hmm. and you know how the not being utilised. The, re the resol resolution three offers us, can you just lift that up a wee bit? Yeah. Um, Rather than just limit that to um, an alternative public use, or not, um, well, well, I mean, no, there, an alternative public use gets around it, but a, an alternative um, strategic or public use, you know, like it's because yeah. it may well not necessarily be in our interest to be the owner. Exactly. I mean, I, I was going to ask the same question about the Yorkhurst um, Memorial Hall. Um, you know, and I know that there was a debate at the time as to whether building halls was appropriate way of memorialising, um, as in, uh, uh, you know, the issue arises when a building comes to the end of its life. Mm. <laughs> um, and this one's been damaged and closed uh, by the earthquake, so it's, it's not serving the purpose that it was built for, and it's not serving any purpose. Um, and I mean. Is it actually better off in our ownership doing that, or is it better off in the community's ownership where they could, um, you know, sort of develop it? And um, <coughs> I, I understood that there was some interest in the there is, community. And there is, and those meetings are, are happening now. I was invited to one with the community yesterday, but I couldn't get to it because I had other um, engagements. But next week I will be work meeting with the with that. Um, community group that's driving <coughs> the um, proposal for the Althurst War Memorial Hall. But, I mean, that may involve them putting up a proposal where they become the owners. That's mm. all of that, so that's being well, but, but why would we make a decision now to hold it in mm. our ownership? Exactly. Um. Um, because we... We don't want to preempt what might come out of the discussions with the with the community. Mr. Watson and I have been talking about this, but anyway, he can update you. So three applies to both. Can, can, yeah. uh, can I just um, clarify something in terms of the process? Um, the, the first precipitous decision, um, and if you reflect back to the four reports we had last month, is do we want to declare property surplus and sell them? Now that that is, but that triggers a process for that some because a of process. the underlying designation. We're yeah. absolutely obliged to then go on and sell it. Um, so unless we're very clear that we want to sell it and get rid of it, um, I caution the council not to make that decision. I think, in, and then you've got the second group of properties, which is let's hold these for a strategic purpose to be worked on over the future. And then there's those two properties there in the third group, which is um, we think these would be suitable for community uses or they have community uses in them or other public uses. Let's work and um, come up with a proposal that can be well supported for those. If, if I'm picking up on the debate properly around uh, maybe the Yolthurst Hall and um, the Heskett Roads properties, I think uh, the category they're in is good. What I'm hearing is you want to prioritise those and have them looked at sooner rather than later. Yeah. So I, I don't think it needs the amend, the resolutions amended, but what it what it is is a message to staff and the community board that we crack on with those ones yeah. as a priority and with some urgency. Well, if we can get that, that if we can get that, um, you know, assertion that mm -hmm. I suppose then we'll have to follow it up, and I, I, I hope the community board will follow that up. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, we, this is, a, is asking us to delegate authority to the community board to make the decision for um, retention for alternative use. Whereas, I mean, the community board might say, "No, well, we better own it. Um, we're not going to, we're not going to put a proposal back to council." Um, yeah, true. You know, but you could. Yeah. I you know, know, and I mean, uh, the we're question is, is. 
I mean, uh, no, I think it should be cancelled. Hmm? Well, I've got I've got no philosophical objection to the community board making making a decision, but but I I kind of don't want them to feel constrained around the delegated authority, in that we would be probably prepared to consider, you know, selling it as we have done with other. Facilities. I mean, we've either provided funding or we've um, provided a facility to a community group who've taken it over. Mm. So um, that could be an outcome of the discussions that are going on there. That, yes. Um, that resolution four relates only to the properties in resolution two, upon satisfaction of the issues in three. So it's only related to. The third group of properties, which is to look for alternate uses, mm -hmm. but I, that's the, what the, I can't the understand. The category yeah. two, paragraph two says support retention of the following properties subject to the conditions in resolution three, and then resolution three says retention of the properties set out in resolutions one and two above. So it doesn't make sense to me. I'm just if, if it really is one and two above, then yes, why correct. would that should just be one? Uh, just be two. Well, I don't agree with that because there's a whole lot more properties that should mm. be in there. No, the resolution three should actually only say um, retention of the property set out in conditions. Mm. So the, the process back? outlined there in three and four relates to the two properties in resolution two. Uh, there is no intention to give delegations or make decisions on the others apart from hold them for the purpose of being looking at and reviewed in the future. And those decisions would come back through the community board to council. Yeah, well, this is where I got confused because three says retention of the property set out in resolutions one and two. Yeah, it should only be two. But, but we want you to go through a process of this for, for, for the some of the properties in one. Correct. Or should we? I mean, correct. But the the decisions in one are um, what are we going to do with those properties strategically? They're not to go out and look for alternate public uses. So the the community board have said in terms of the two properties in two, we think they're suitable for alternate public uses. We want you to go out and look at those, and they've got to meet those criteria and bring back some decisions on future public mm. uses. The, the properties in the first category are not, hey, we want to look for alternate public uses. They require some st higher strategic decisions. Do we want to hold them? Do we want to sell them? Those sort of things. So that would be a separate line of work? That's a separate line of work and, and at a higher strategic level. Whereas the ones in two, I'd definitely go out and find another public use. We want to keep those in council ownership and we want to look at alternate public uses for them. But we're not saying that with the properties in one. The properties in one, you're saying keep them in council ownership for a future strategic purpose? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So, so the work is to identify that strategic purpose or not? Mm. That's, that's yet to be identified. So what they're saying is we don't think these properties should be A, sold or B, used for another public purpose until we really have a good feeling of what we want to do with them. So it could be but working with the community board, they actually go, oh, let's sell them. Or we've got some other ideas we want to use for them. Yeah. It's not a final decision, no. But I think those properties... But retention we're delegating I, to the community board. I think if you look at it in terms of... There's a list of properties, and one is we don't want them, let's sell them. The other one is we want to use them for alternate public uses, and the other one is we're not sure. And all we're retaining for strategic we'll work purposes. Through. If I may, uh, Madam Mayor, I, I think there is a way for... You don't need to change the delegation, the uh, resolution as recommended there. If you look at number 3E, that is the key hurdle that needs to be addressed. And for sites such as, if, if your concern is, and I'll use the example, that the board might decide they want to retain the Yieldhurst Hall, um, but council might choose to have a different approach. In fact, E comes into play because there is no budget 
set aside apart for demolition. So the board won't have that delegation because there is no funding established. It will have to come back to council for the final decision. Oh, for the funding. And it was the same, I'm pretty mm. sure, the Haskett's Road. Yeah. We don't contain, um, I have to scrimp and save to find any money we, um, uh, we have in there because there's no allocation in the long-term plan for the maintenance of the Saskatchewan Road properties. So that becomes the key restriction. You can leave the recommendation as is, um, and the board's recommendations will have to come to council for consideration. I'm just, I mean, I'm not wa wanting, and you know, I'm, you've been very helpful. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking that there was a pretty strong submission, as I recall, and I don't have any of the facts in front of me, in relation to the Yorthurst Memorial Hall. Um, that I'm hearing from the community board chair that they're in active conversation with the community. Rather than including it in a resolution that states that we want to approve the retention of it for a future strategic purpose, when we have money on budget just to demolish it, I would, I'd much rather just say, um, provide further advice on you, your, so take it out of there, provide further advice on Yorthurst Memorial Hall, 5 to 4 Pound Road, once the um, discussions have been had with the local community. Because that, um, Leanne, that's, that's exactly what's happening. Um, it says, if you go to three, the retention of these proper properties, um, as long as for public use that can be rationalised, satisf satisfy, satisfies a clearly identified need and is supported by a sound, robust business case. Um, that, is, that is what's happening now, is that community are trying to put together a sound, robust business case. If they can't, then it will come back and we may, we may um, start considering other options for that site, but that's where it's at. Is, but what I've been told is that the expression Reason, yeah. plural, plural resolution yep. one and is not what the report was meant to say. It was only meant three is only meant to apply to two. Well, we were quite happy with it at a community board to accept the staff recommendation without change because it, we'd had workshops, we'd had workshop on it, we'd been and visited all the sites. We had discussions before this report was written. When it did come to us, we were comfortable um, as, a, as a majority to adopt the staff recommendation without change. Well, he, 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 I'm going to move an amendment then because I, I, I'm, I just think that classifying it as uh, uh, approving the retention of it for a future strategic purpose today um, is not necessary when we're having conversations with the community, and I think it would show good faith to the community that we highlighted the Yorthurst Memorial Hall, that we said that we wanted further advice once the, once the local community had, had an opportunity to provide some input. I, I mean, it just, I just think it would send a very good message to the local community. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I think it's okay. okay. Oh, okay. well, I think it's okay. Intention is it? It's open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, Leanne was going to move an amendment. Sorry. Yeah. On yeah. the all Hall. And just specifically on the all Hall. Same. I think it's fine, actually. I yeah. think it's good. I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, well, we're, we're probably 80 percent through through the discussions on yeah. the old Hall. We've asked them to come back with a business plan through the board and then, and then yep. through the council. Um, remembering that the board has um, had made a recommendation to have it demolished, mm. it came to council and that was put on hold at the last minute. Yep. So they've had seven months of, of research and having a look at it. Um, the only question I have put to them is- So who put it on hold? No, the council did. The council did? Put the discussion on hold in uh, November last year. December, December last year, company board presented this issue, particular. So this uh, is why I'm remembering it. Yeah, yeah, that that time time why do we want to include it in a resolution approving the retention of it when we haven't had that further report back? I explained that back. to the meeting at the time, and um, so um, the council resolved at that time 
to to what, embark what, on this process, which we still which with this still, with this would anyone die in a ditch if I was to just cross it out? No. Yeah, and, and no. The, the let's just, is showing, let's just do it. There's no unintended consequences if you take it out. So right. I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Delete. Are you sure? Yeah. 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 I think it's okay. You're happy to move. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. and seconded by yeah. Vicky. Yeah. Right. Any discussion? Yeah. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Aye. That's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Almost done. <laughs> Whose questions started? We've got we've got tea and coffee outside. Do people want to grab a grab a coffee? Yeah, so we'll take take ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs>
We'll end the meeting the same way. Yep. Right. So the next item is the Chief Executive's report. I'm just going to take it as read. I was going to talk about the awards, but we've already done that. So. All right. Yanni, I know that you're there. <laughs> Yanni? Great. Yeah. I, I just, I had some questions on this. I just yep. wanted to flag that. Far away. Oh, cool. Um, just, I just wondered, um, we still don't have any date for the review of the water issue, um, the drinking water. And I just if there's any update on a lightly back back for that report by Bruce Robertson. That's the first question. I don't see that in my report. So you're asking about something outside of my report? Um, I can't, well, give, you a date at, I can't water. give you a date at the moment. Right, OK. Um, the second question was in relation to the properties. It makes reference to um, the land drainage on page 120. Um, under the flooding intervention policy, it talks about the property that we've acquired. And one of the issues, well, one of the questions on the bottom is it says that um, four have been demolished. I, I was just trying to understand if there's any process strategically to think about potential transitional uses before properties are demolished. Um, this was raised as part of discussions over the um, Heathcote River briefing, joint briefing that we had as community boards and as drainage and also property disposal process. So I just wanted to understand if there is any uh, report coming back to us around future use options before properties are demolished. Just thinking of what's happened in the red zone, for example, is something that we've been trying to avoid. And I'm wondering whether there's any transitional temporary uses um, that uh, are being considered. We always look at those things, um, but uh, some of the properties will be related to uh, work around land drainage and be required for that. Um, so it really depends on um, uh, the specific use or not over that period of time. Uh, so there's not planned to be any report coming back on individual properties. Uh, I think that's a real gap, and I think we, we should think about some sort of process at least, particularly, you know, I, know, I just know along the Hifka in our area, for example, number of properties on the property disposal list that have come through the community board that are quite close to where possibly some of the properties are acquired. We've got potential cycleways going through with designs and landscape plans for the river and yet we don't seem to have any any connection to the properties that have been acquired and being demolished. Uh, yeah, so as I say, we'll consider all those things with individual properties, but as um, uh, um, many of them are demolished as part of a bigger program, such as the land drainage program. Sorry, I just, I understand why we've acquired them. Mm -hmm. Are you saying they're demolished because there's works that we're doing on those properties in terms of land drainage? Uh, well, there might be. Um, it depends on the individual properties. Okay. I just wonder if we would get a memo around what the process is for consideration before they're demolished, so that if the board or community have potential uh, uses. Um, the, the only other thing related to that was around whether there's any sort of recycling going on of the properties. I know this again, this was one of the issues that came up with red zone demolitions, that the lack of sustainability and how those properties were demolished meant that a lot of stuff was just gone go to landfill rather than being used with the value that it had. Yeah, we always consider those things as well. Okay. Um, and a final question I had was just around, um, it was around the CSRs that have come in um, on page 118. The request for service related to three orders and waste transfer needed to compliance of the top three. I'm just really concerned about the number of requests for service related to transport that increased by 22% over the last year, um, and it was potholes, road tunnel, and sweeping. Mm -hmm. can, can you just give us an understanding of what the organisation is doing in response to that huge increase, um, and when we, when we sort of expect to see either it stabilise in terms of um, the increase not 
not going up as much or, or hopefully reducing uh, significantly. Uh, so as you're aware, um, we've been doing some work around our maintenance contracts, um, ensuring that they're um, responsive um, uh, and, and proactive. Um, uh, in terms of the things around potholes, so again, uh, through the CSR process, uh, look to repair those as soon as possible. I've um, had some good feedback on some of those. Um, I think some of this is also about just increased awareness and increased ability for people to put in CSRs. Um, so we're likely to continue to see more of those um, uh, over a period of time before they level off. Right. Um, and um, and I mean, just in conclusion, I, I just really... Sorry. Yeah. You go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to commend the staff that have developed, the, I think it's the GIS or the smart mm -hmm. map where you can actually, we can actually log in and see all the CSR type yep. requests. I, I just think that's a fantastic resource and it's really valuable for us yep. as elected members to see where there's clusters of requests coming in and, and, and so... I think it's only sin snap solve at the moment, mm. um, but I just wanted to pass some you know, my, my um, appreciation for the staff that have developed that. I think it's a really useful tool. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, and I agree that it help, it's helpful for us then to really focus on uh, perhaps our contracts in particular areas or um, to identify um, where we need to put some extra effort. Yeah. Very good. Any other thank questions? You. Any other questions for the Chief Executive, um, uh, Glenn? Uh, yes, a question. Uh, thank you for the information on the comprehensive stormwater network discharge consent, uh, Colleen, Colleen, which the Ihutai Trust is taking mm -hmm. interest in from their perspective. But my question is about the midges. Mm -hmm. Just what are those? Perhaps David has the information. The ensuring the new planned midge control measures are ready uh, for the start of next month. What are the new? Uh, measures aside from what we've, what we've been trying. I, I'm sorry, uh, to get the detail I'll have to go mm. back to... Um, yeah, I uh, understand rather than new, it's about a you know, new year in I terms of really addressing yeah. that and it was reasonably successful at the end of last uh, season. Uh, so we were looking to do that um, earlier and more comprehensively. Okay. Good. Well I'd like to move that... Oh, um, yeah. Jimmy? Okay. Regarding to the... Uh, the Page one one five engagement and consultation. Here, particular emphasize the council, the fourteen project for the consultation. Says to some of the finish, but 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 my view is uh, because uh, we have uh, launched the uh, multicultural strategy for more than one year, but my view is quite a few of the projects still not yet engaged with those uh, multi multicultural group or service and information sector. But uh, this time, I'm quite happy, you know, the kind of the council, the heritage, the uh, strategy, they have uh, focused on engage with those the multi multicultural group leaders will turn up, so this late uh, the evening. I'm quite happy whether this one can be the kind of role model the other project might consider just one time integrate all those uh, mm. committee leaders come to feedback to us. Mm. This is my suggestion. Mm, very good suggestion. Um, and the more we can integrate our thinking around those things, the better. Yes. Mm, agree. Thank you. Thank you. Bill. Thanks, Leanne. I just want to make the point, and um, Carleen's referred to the opening of the Woods Mill, and just how significant that is, given the time that has taken I think it's probably at least 15 years it's been going. It was certainly well pre-earthquake. There were attempts to restore it. And I, I take my hats off the developers who had a go, and there were quite a few failures. But it's, I think it's a good example where the, the HIG, and what was big money, it was $900,000, it has really worked out. I understand that all of the apartments um, that Mr King has built have, have all been sold, and it was good to be at that opening. Sorry? I just years. went down to have a look at it over the weekend. It's amazing. So it's, it's certainly I a story of perseverance. It. I actually found yeah. it by accident. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Extraordinary. All right. Well, I'll move that we um, receive the report. Is there a seconder for that? Phil. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. And now we'll move on to the Mayor's monthly report. And. Um, <coughs> Just, I thought that I would highlight the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas students' visit to Christchurch as well. I know that one of the community boards did too, 
but um, it was an exceptionally powerful occasion, I thought. It was a great opportunity to have young um, students who'd been through uh, you know, a disaster meeting up with a group of students who, 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 who didn't so much live through the disaster and the role that they're in today, but, but showed the longevity of a movement that had purpose and that's the Student Volunteer Army. So they both organisations emerged from the disaster, but um, you know, I, I just thought it was incredibly powerful. And I went to their leadership summit where they, they had a number of presentations, and then they kicked all of the adults out of the room. And the two groups uh, have worked hard on developing the, 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 the model that enables a movement to keep going um, beyond the you know, the, with the immediate aftermath of disaster. Um, so I've invited the Student Volunteer Army to come and present to the symposium that the government's organising. I've uh, advised the Minister and she's very pleased um, with that uh, approach and um, I think that's going to be a very powerful legacy that they will leave. Um, not only our city and not just the city of Parkland, Florida, but also um, you know, the world uh, in terms of young people and their capacity to step up um, after disaster strikes. So it was a pretty pretty powerful and, and moving occasion as, um, as, as I've identified in the report. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Yanni, have you got any questions for me? Uh, I, just, I just only had one um, brief, brief comment really. Um, and that was just to say, you know, I was really disappointed I couldn't be there for the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas students visit, mm -hmm. as people maybe where I went to high school in the USA, um, walked through metal detectors in school every day um, with armed policemen at our school 24-7. Uh, um, and also, I've got a personal connection to Florida, that's where my grandparents were from. So I, I just really wanted to say thank you for hosting them. I wanted to acknowledge um, Nancy Gilbert for her role mm. in, in bringing that together. Um, and I, while being disappointed not being there, I'm sure that Christchurch and, and yourself went out of your way to make them feel welcome, and I just really appreciate appreciate that. So that was the only point I wanted to make in regards to your report. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, thank you for that, Yanni. It was, it was that, and it was all of that. It was, um, it was incredibly amazing. And Nancy Gilbert, who's our honorary consul, and uh, Florida. She's she's had that role for oh, I don't know about nine months, and I think she's achieved more um, than I, than I think any honorary consul in the world has achieved in terms of um, making a, a a very real and meaningful connection uh, between Florida and and Christchurch, New Zealand. It's just yeah, it's been outstanding. So. Um, uh, Vicky. Very brief question. The symposium you mentioned, um, uh, uh, and I seem to remember reading somewhere the number of people that could go to it wasn't very high. Well, there are a number of workshops that are being worked on as but well. It's it's just the venue. Yeah. Is yeah. it going to be uh, able to be watched? Mm. Uh, yes. Yes, it will be. It will be. Uh, as I understand it, it will be live streamed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's at the end of November. But there'll be a lot more details. There's still um, invitations going out to speakers and um, sorting out the final um, process. And we've got a couple of workshops that we're working on at the moment as well. All right, would someone like to move? Tim, thank you. Aaron, thank you. I'll um, put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Those opposed say no. Aye. That's carried. <laughs> <laughs> The people were laughing, Yanni, because it sounds like you're saying no. <laughs> the timing's, the timing's everything, but that's all right. It's a delayed yes. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda, uh, agenda is external membership on council hearings panels, which we asked for a report back on, so we're going back to the other report, I think. Yeah. Since I was late. Yes, here we go. Um, so this is a, um, a delegation to myself acting on advice um, in terms of any external membership to council hearings panels um, other than those under the RMA on a case-by-case -case basis where matters of significance to mana whenua have been identified or being considered. This came up as a result of the 
um, reserve <coughs> paper that we considered um, a few weeks ago. You're happy to move? Moved by Tim, seconded by Aaron. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's aye. carried. Thank you very much. Um, the outline under yeah, the... No, just, sorry. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Just in regards to that voting, um, I'm just saying if I want something voted against, I'll just express that, but otherwise I'll just remain silent and just take it um, that might be in favour, unless I express otherwise. Cool. Sorry? Is that okay? Yeah, we're going to go. Yeah. 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 I was just going to say, regards to voting, I'll just, unless I'm voting against something, I just will remain yes. um, in that, favour, that's, but that's I won't fine. say anything. Okay, cheers. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the, the, the next paper is the um, outline under the Greater Christchurch Regeneration Act, proposed part revocation. Um, sorry, I'm just, I'm just trying to find which paper it's on. It's on the first one, isn't it? Yeah. On the 17. Oh, no, I've gone to the wrong one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, I've got it in front of me. Who, who have we got with this one? Uh, well, it's going to be Ivan Thompson or Ivan. Yeah. No, I've just emailed Ivan. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> Ivan, perfect timing. Come and grab a seat at the table. Thank you. Oh no, no. Well, uh, I know what it means. Um, what it means is that uh, Regenerate Christchurch are um, developing the otakaro avon River Corridor Regeneration Plan rather than, um, well, yeah, the outline proposes partial revocation, it says evocation in here, <laughs> revocation of existing provisions of the LERP and the Christchurch Central Recovery Plan that could affect the achievement of outcomes in the Regeneration Plan. Um, no, sorry. This, is, this outline proposes partial revocation of existing provisions of the LERP and the Central City Recovery Plan that could affect achievement of outcomes in the otakaro avon River Corridor Regeneration Plan. So it's that tiny little bit of the avon, um, otakaro avon River Corridor <coughs> that sits within the four avenues. So that's all it's talking about is just that little portion of um, land that um, that sits within the CCRP boundaries, which is within the four avenues. Okay? So, so it's just that tiny bit. It's the Avon Loop. Do we need a map? No. You know what I mean. Yes. The Avon Loop. Yes. Yeah. Tim. So just, because for me I've been bit, you know, going on about how important the Avon Loop is, is you know, we have one chance in our lifetime, or the city's life, to add a, a um, city park to our armory if you like of for events etc as Hagley Park is to the point of almost being overused we have an opportunity how will that affect this or our process and our say in that okay <clears throat> the current situation is that the uh, central crisis recovery plan has appendix one which is the regulatory framework for the central city and that regulatory framework uh, is now in our district plan, but it is all that area is zone residential. So the, the actual recovery plan itself used the old zoning, so it's living four or four A or something. In our new plan, it is central city residential. Now, in order for the regeneration for the uh, Otakaro Avon regeneration or the corridor plan to get momentum in the in that part of the central city we need to change the plan, and we can't change the plan until we revoke that part of the Christchurch Central Recovery Plan. And the LERP. And you are not quite sure about the LERP. There's a, in the letter in the, uh, that we're suggesting is that we need the clarification on what part of the LERP needs to be revoked. I, actually, I'm, I'm, personally, I don't think the LERP probably needs to be touched for this particular process that probably we, we can address that issue later on because it's basically redundant but coming back there the, yeah, the recovery the central city or well, the Christchurch central recovery plan needs to be amended in order to facilitate that corridor through into the avon loop mm. yeah um 
Phil and Glenn. Thanks, Ivan. Um, look, we're aware that Rege Regeneration Christchurch, Regenerate Christchurch, have been doing their consultation. And I'm just wondering what other opportunities there might still be. Um, for example, we had a presentation at, at, at our committee yesterday from Kate, Kate Jews um, around on, on world peace and disarmament. She reminded us that Elsie Locke had previously been a park, as you'll recall, and there's no, long, no, no longer there. So it's, um, and Kate suggested that perhaps around the part of that Avon Loop there might be a pe uh, scope for a park with a peace walk. So I'm just wondering. Tim also referred to a park, say, in that area. Is there still, still scope within Regeneration Christchurch's plans for us to be able to include some of these ideas that have come to this council table? I believe so. This is the first stage. The, an outline simply sets out the process. It doesn't set out the outcomes. Now, some of you may remember when we did the Cranford Regeneration Plan, that, is, that was preceded by an outline, and what the outline did was said, right, you've got to, this is the process by which you will do the regeneration plan. It's set out time frames, engagement, that kind of thing. So this is the same thing. It doesn't actually deal with outcomes. So what the outline says, this is a process, this is the issue, right, now we, the next stage is to do the revocation, and then there is more feedback sought amongst the partners, and that's the appropriate time you could give that feedback. Yeah. Yep. Glenn. Thank you, and thank you, Ivan. My question is in relation to an example there, page 136, uh, where it says, for example, section 60 of the um, Pro Cross Check requires RMA decision makers to not make a decision inconsistent with a regen plan or a recovery plan. I, I'm just curious over wh uh, whether there are any potential downsides to that or any detail <coughs> that we need to be. No, that's the very reason for doing this, because if uh, Regenerate Christchurch produced a, a plan which, say, had open space, which is probably likely, it's inconsistent with the Central Christchurch Recovery Plan. So and you can't do that. Uh, so Well, they can amend. Well, they can amend, yeah, but you can't do it. You you, that's why it's been re revoked or amended, this part of it, so that what they do is consistent with, the re with that recovery plan. The, the way I read this was that this was more of a belts, belts and braces approach because they actually have the power under the Regeneration oh. Act to amend the Central City Recovery Plan yeah. in the plan itself. Yeah. But I think that they don't want to do that because um, in a way it detracts from what they're trying to do in terms of the, the whole of the, 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 the vision for the corridor. Yes, that's um, correct. Yeah. And to get into a technical decision around amending an existing plan. I, I mean, I, I favour this approach. Um, I probably wanted to see whether it could go a bit further and sort a few other things out. But um, I've been persuaded that it's probably better to deal with this as a standalone item and, and resolve it. And it, it's, it'll be a relatively quick process. Um, I don't think anyone will will take a particular objection to to freeing this up for the regeneration processes under the Act. It's to, it's just caught in a it's caught in a um, this little vortex of um, previous planning arrangements. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I guess it will act. Oh, so it will serve to act for the wider corridor once. No. It, no. Once and once only, just for. No, no. no the, the, the central city recovery plan yeah. stops at the four. Um, avenues. So it doesn't go into the residential red zone at any other way, shape or form. Down. I just wanted to be clear, so by doing this, well actually I'll start again, the reason that we need to do this is because this is central city living and that would go against what Regen are trying to propose with the green spine which would be parks. Basically. It would make it easier procedurally and clearer for the public I think as to what uh, you know, it, 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 what needs to be done to progress the the Otakaro Avon corridor or, or regeneration plan into the into the central city or into this part of the central city? Yeah. It's just clearing the regulatory. So yeah. you didn't actually make it. The, there, a park, there was a lot of concern yeah, about yeah. the retention of central city residential in this area for actually the points that whoever mentioned elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, got, no, I get it. That's good. Um, raised. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, 
Yanni, did you have any questions? Uh, no, I'm good, thank you. Okay. So moved by Dion, seconded by Tim. Um, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. <coughs> That's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you. Uh, draft submission on the uh, Christchurch Casino um, licence renewal application. Hmm? Yes. You have an interest in the casino. <laughs> don't, don't say things like that. Even as a joke, it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Okay. All right. Okay. Right. Sorry, this is on the other sheet. Um, right. Okay. So um, this hasn't been to a committee or anything like that. Yes, it has. Um, a workshop. So, um, Phil, would you like to introduce it then? I'm sure the staff can add to this, but I, I guess the casino being well known, we, it also has a, a very big role really in terms of hospitality in Christchurch, it's quite central. So, um, but what, when we had the workshop we decided, we'd really like, and that was with um, guidance from the staff too, that we'd like to see some additional conditions w with the licence that they have. It's not to say they're not doing a good job. Um, and that things aren't done in an orderly way, but there are some, some things that we thought could be improved. One was that, that they be clear of messaging around the issue of problem gambling for people so that um, those negative effects of gambling can be avoided. Um, and also, bear in, we need to bear in mind, and it was in the report, that the, um, in Christchurch we've got a higher proportion of our population who, who need to seek uh, problem gambling services than throughout the rest of the country. So um, what the other part with the submission too is to actually ask, I guess, the casino for a bigger contribution to the charitable trust, uh, which assists problem gambling. And, and um, the report shows that, in fact, when the casino started, there was quite a significant amount of money. I think it was about 200,000 a year. That has come back quite a lot. And we understand that throughout New Zealand, uh, tr uh, gam uh, casinos do contribute um, more, on a, um, and we're going to. The, the recommendation was that we ask for either 2.5 per cent of their profits or um, 225,000 a year. I've got the right, whichever was the, the greater. So, um, yeah, and, and the other part too was that um, that we as a council could have closer links with the trust and be more involved, um, so that in fact there might be a councillor or um, who who will be have part of a forum that they already have so that in fact we can you know, have these discussions around the, 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 these issues. Um, and that uh, <coughs> council in that way would be a link with our um, Christchurch communities for the casino. But there might be other specifics too that Gavin might like to read. Right, has anyone got any questions? I think it's all been... I yep. just uh, wonder, sorry I wasn't at the seminar yesterday, um, I just wonder if the 2.5% is actually sufficient, or the 225,000 uh, per annum. Like, if you go through their figures, the, ta the profit was in excess of 16 million before tax for two, 217. Um, the net profit for the cas casino is not provided within the Skyline Group, but the group pr recorded a profit of 68 million for the 217 year. I think we're being quite conservative with our 225,000. When Christchurch Casino came into the city, it was the first casino in the country, so it wasn't subject to these same rules. Um, I like the idea that um, that they have to give some money back to the community. I don't think it all needs to go on problem gambling. I think, they, but but they should definitely provide money back to a community that needs it. Um, and I just think 225,000 is, whoa, it's low. <laughs> I mean, at the moment they're giving, they started off at 191,000 per year for the first five years, and then they dropped to 141,000. So this is probably the only chance we get for what, another 25 years? 15 years. 15, yeah. okay, still quite a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so the amount per annum will actually matter. Um, I just think 225 is very conservative. 
I, I tend to agree it? as what one councillor too, Vicky, um, and I guess now is a time to perhaps in, increase that percentage at least. Well, we've made it the greater 2.5 or, or. or a dollar figure, which is fine, um, because sometimes it's expressed differently. Um, I just wanted to increase it to 100 mm. mm. so yeah. That keeps us in line with Auckland, uh, 500k. That's what they receive. Queenstown Wharf much and the greater. The profits the same as it in Auckland. Sorry. The profits the same in Auckland, is it? Well, sixteen million for tax. No, but proportionately, well, proportionately the effects are worse in Christchurch. No, no, but it's, it's not about. This isn't about the problem problem gambling. It's, this is actually about giving back to giving the back to their community. And I think you've got a better chance if you if you make it proportionate to you know the other. The other institutions, which is what I thought that you had done, but um we we'd certainly um, provided a comparison of what uh, the other casinos are required to put into their charitable trusts. Is it a percentage? Uh, well, they vary. A lot of them have a percentage and a um, and a dollar figure, um, this is similar to what's being proposed here, with the greater required to go to the trust, but. There's huge variation in the requirements on the casinos throughout the country, and we haven't been able to find a clear rationale for why um, those differences exist. So the only conclusion we could come to is that it's somewhat arbitrary and, um, and is decided as part of, I guess, the negotiation with the community to establish a, a casino in the first place. Um, as Councillor Buck said, um, as Christchurch was the first casino in the country, mm. um, that negotiation with the community, if you like, didn't happen. Right. Effectively a social licence, but I mean, if, the, if the amount is going to stay the same for 10 years, you want to Um, did you? I'm just, I'm just reading it now back over again because. Did you make the point that that this that we were the first cab off the rank, of, as it were, and that therefore subsequent licences ha enabled, you know, that conversation to occur? Oh. No, that's not specifically made, um, but the... It's a good point, though. Yeah. It's quite a strong point, and, and, and I actually also like the, the language that um, Vicky just used, which is social licence, um, you know, because there is, you know, I mean, gambling's going to occur in society whether it's legal or not, you know, I mean, um, you know, that, but, but, and, but this is, this is, a, this is legalised gambling, so... Um, and one of the quid pro quos is the uh, return um, to both the problem that it creates and also to the community. The community part's the social licence, in my view. So um, I, I just think that if we just make that a little bit stronger, mm -hmm. is, they're not hearing submissions, are they, or are they? Yes, they are. Does it say that? Um, in the uh, uh, recommendation, um, the second recommendation is that the council delegates oh, yeah, authority. Oh, yeah, wishes to be heard. Look, I, I, nothing sort of, but I mean, it, you know, I don't want to give myself extra work, but what about saying delegate authority to the mayor and the chair of the social community? I'm very happy that you speak to it too. Yeah, because I mean, I just think that if, if you want something, then you've got to present a really powerful case, and, and the language is important, and the history is important as well. So, um, which means that we don't really need, to, if, if we're going to be heard in person, then we don't need to adjust it. We can, um, we can say that in person. Except we do need to adjust the numbers, mm -hmm. and we need to adjust, and we need to be very clear about that 
that their charitable contribution needs to be very clear and open and transparent, which it does not appear to what be. What date does this have to be in by? 8th of August. And that's next week. Okay, well look, why don't you just um, delegate the final version to me and Phil. Yep. Yep. Oh. Uh, see. <laughs> Is that no. Yanni um, coming or going? <laughs> right. Um, uh, just two things quickly with the um, the with the time frame and the dollar amount and things. It could be that this is just a suggestion when you do speak that um, it could be a dollar amount that increases over time, and that could be as part of the the license. But the other thing is with the inconsistency um, around the country of the different amounts and the, the lack of clarity over why that is. Do we want to, to write to the government and ask for um, a national sort of um, directive on that? I, I think that would be fine, but it won't solve this. No, 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 because they'd only be able to as yeah. licences came up. Yeah, I but, suspect um, it's not high on their just list. just an additional I suspect thing. it's not high on their list. No, I wouldn't think so. Yeah, yeah. Given that all the casinos will need to go through this process at some point, it may be something worth noting to the Gambling Commission, who will oversee all of those renewal processes. Yeah. Yeah, but getting some sort of consistent approach yeah. and rationale and things like that would be really good. Yeah. Um, and asking for that to happen. So I'm, I'm happy with what you've suggested, Leanne, but I wonder if we couldn't just alter that dollar figure. Yeah, but But that the minimum figure be yeah, five hundred. And then put it put in brackets with, with the adjusted with the adjusted figures. So it was a percentage and a dollar amount. But it, I mean we'll, we'll just sign it off. Yeah, no, no, no problem. But but those figures should be two point five and five hundred. Yeah. Two point five and five hundred. Or, or five hundred thousand, whichever is the greater. Yeah, which is what the document. Yeah. Question, please. Yeah. Um, is that post tax? It's I mean, I presume they pay income tax. It's an interesting question. Yeah, they they pay income tax as a consolidated group. The the casino is part of the Skyline um, Corporation. Mm -hmm. Um, so all of them pay income tax and the requirements in the conditions are net profit, so after tax. Right. Yeah, I, I wonder if we should be a little bit in careful there. that we're just not no, arbitrarily it's just saying give us some money. It is a legitimate business and they yeah. do pay tax. Should say net profit yeah. after tax. And they pay more than tax Yeah, there's a gambling levy. There's a gambling that levy that sits over the top of each machine as well. So, yeah, yeah. No, I understand that, and I understand the double zeros on their roulette wheel and everything. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the this is the figure for Auckland. Mm. All right. Um, so that five hundred seems. Yeah. Yeah. Fair for over the course plus, of fifteen plus years. Plus, it's set in concrete for fifteen years as well. But, but I think having it increasing over, having the dollar amount increasing over time, if they're able to do that, would be quite good over fifteen years. Well, I think it's fine because you're covered by the two point five percent. So it's yeah. whatever is higher. Those. Yeah, All right. Our wharf has done that. Would someone like to move this, Phil? Would you like to move it? Second of Vicky. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That is carried. Um, now, have we got? Have we got anything on the PX agenda? No. No PX. No PX. No eh? no we'll say that loud. Right. There is no public excluded items for us to consider today. So, um, I would like to. Um, Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I was, I was going to um, declare the meeting closed, but just, 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 you know, just.
I want to do it on the right note. <laughs> right, I declare the meeting closed. <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs>